We welcome you to Thibodeau, Louisiana for Southland Conference football as the Nichols Colonels host the Prairie View A&M Panthers from the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Hello, everybody, and welcome to John L. Guidry Stadium on the Nichols campus. I'm Ken Berthelot along with Wade Kaiser, and we've got a game tonight that features two programs that are on the rise. Both football teams last week almost played giant killer Let's start with the Prairie View A&M Panthers, Wade Kaiser, because they went to the number three team in the country and almost beat them. I'll tell you what, that was Sam Houston State. They took them right to the hilt last week. And I'll tell you what, it was about their offense last week. 451 yards total offense, scoring four times every time they're inside the red zone. Expect to see some fireworks out of this offense tonight, Ken. Two years ago, or last year rather, uh, Nichols almost played giant killer at Georgia last week. They almost upset the Texas A&M Aggies. Well, I'll tell you what, an SEC team doesn't want to schedule the Nichols Colonels again because sooner or later they're going to pick one off. Like you said, last year it was Georgia, almost. Last drive, Georgia beats them. Well, last week they go into Texas A&M at College Station and do a great job. Twelve minutes left to go in the game is when Texas A&M finally caught up and tied the ball game. Tell you what, Tim Rebo has these guys playing well. SEC doesn't want to schedule these guys down the road. You bet. Both coaches say this game will rest on the decision-making and the play of their quarterbacks. Let's start, first of all, with Lavelle McCullers, the transfer first-year starter for Prairie View A&M. What a great talent. You're going to see a lot of what we call RPOs, run-pass options tonight. He runs them perfectly, getting great reads off the last guys on the line of scrimmage or strong safeties, things like that. Last week, 146 yards rushing, one touchdown. This guy is a great talent. Nickel State is going to have their hands full tonight with Mr. McCullers. And, of course, for the Colonels, everybody now familiar with Chase Forcade. He is a sophomore and continues to just amaze the crowds and the opponents. I've known Chase Forcade ever since he was a kid. I saw him play on the playground. I coached against him in high school. I've seen him play now at the college level. The thing that would worry me about opposing coach with Chase Forcade is not how well he runs the ball, not how well he throws the ball. It's how he competes. He's never down. He's never out. He's a leader. He's a field general, and he's always going to keep you in the ball game. We got the makings for a good one. We're going to get set for football. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back in one minute, we'll get set for the meeting of the captains at the center of the field and the start of tonight's game. Nichols won the toss, deferred, will kick off to the Panthers of Prairie View A&M here at John L. Guidry Stadium on just a beautiful evening for college football. The very strong-legged Lauren Fonseca to kick it off for the Colonels and Joshua Simmons 
One of the fastest players on this team and one of the fastest in the conference, the Southwestern Conference. The Colonels won't have to worry about him returning as they put it deep. And we will see Mr. LaBelle McCullers for the first time tonight. Last week when he started, was a little nervous after the transfer into Prairie View a and Took him about a half to really get the butterflies out. But when he did, Wade, he just lit it up for the Panthers. Well, that's the thing about the run-pass option type of offense, which is the craze now from high school all the way up to college. And you're seeing a lot of pro teams run it now because it gives your quarterback a chance to uh, exercise his athletic abilities. It gives him a chance to be able to make a read and not make a bad play. It's when you make the bad read puts you in a bad play. McCullers, a big, tall quarterback, 6'3", 215. Good vision of the field, can create things with his feet. He'll hand off to Stephon McCray, the running back, on first down for a few. McCray runs up inside against the zone blocking scheme by the Panthers, and there was your zone read run pass option right there uh, from McCullers. He reads the last man on the line of scrimmage, the defensive end of Nichols. Coach Willie Simmons in his third year. Only the second coach in Prairie View A&M history to have a winning season in his first two years. He'll keep it on the ground, and the Colonel stuffed this run with a gang tackle. Nowhere to go for McCray. That was number 47, Alan Pittman, who's on the tackle for the Colonels right there. Last year's team tackle leader, and it was the second team Southland Conference selection uh, for the Colonels. I'll tell you what, uh, he needs a good year and a good game today uh, to give the Colonels the opportunity to be able to uh, uh, have some success defensively against this high-powered offense. Third down, seven for Prairie View. Lots of time for McCullers to throw, hit. They're going to rule it incomplete. Tell you what, what a great stick and a great read coming up from his corner position. That was uh, number 25 from the Colonels, De Demetron Brunson, who was a... Uh, or Lyron James, a linebacker, because they have 225s on the roster. And uh, Brunson's a running back, and Lyron James is a linebacker, six foot, 205 pound sophomore. So Lyron James from the University High School in Baton Rouge with the big hit forces a punt situation. Owen Houlihan, good punter, averages about 38 yards a punt. Got that soccer style, rugby style punt, rather. And he's got usually good hang time. And there'll be no return by the Colonels on this one. Pretty good at flipping the field, even though he had a rough week last week. Maybe those opening game jitters for Texas, or, or pardon me, for Prairie View. Well, it also depends on the rugby-style kickers. Are they kicking in the wind? Are they kicking uh, with the wind? Sometimes you're kicking that rugby-style kick into the wind. It gets held up and blown back, or it gets knocked down real quick. Right there, doesn't look like we have much wind here tonight. Uh, at John L. Guidry Stadium. The flag's standing stiff down, so he got a decent kick right there. Now the sophomore quarterback, Chase Forcade. He's been a leader on this team since he started as a freshman last year, started every game. Will hand off on first down, keep it on the ground, and Kyron Irvin will carry. Usually Dontrell Taylor starts at running back, but he was injured against Texas A&M early in that game last week. Yeah, he was injured, uh, Ken, after his third carry last week and uh, didn't come back and play the rest. But uh, Kyron Irvin did a nice job toting the ball for the Colonels' offense last week. Jean-Pierre in motion, one of Fourcade's favorite receivers. Good play action, giving Fourcade time. He's going to go long and is picked off at the 18-yard line. He underthrew the receiver. And uh, I believe that was Will Skinner. On the pick, let's check it. Yes, that was Will Skinner, number 33, coming up there making a nice play on an underthrown ball, trying to stretch the field uh, to be able to get the ball deep, stretch the field, uh, uh, trying to throw over the coverage, and Skinner's right there on the underthrown ball and makes a nice pick. You know, sometimes you've got to throw the ball deep to stretch that secondary to try to keep uh, – 
uh, keep them from coming up inside the box to uh, get extra players against the run, and that's what they were trying to do right there. Just not a very good thrown ball right there by uh, Forcade. And Prairie View uses their own speedster to stretch the field. He'll be lined up down at the bottom of your screen, number three, Joshua Simmons. Uh, not only the fastest man on the Panther team, but also one of the fastest in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Colors. We'll go to the short side, overthrows his man. Had him open. He was trying to hit Jarrell Rogers right there out in the flat. He was the check down. He looked deep over the coverage right there, trying to stretch the field of their own and uh, trying to throw to Darius Floyd right there and uh, on the check down route, just overthrew him. Dewana Tucker is the running back on this series behind Lavelle McCullers. McCullers with a good fake. He'll hurt you with his feet. Picks up a bunch on the right side, short of the first down, however. That'll bring up third down short for Prairie View A&M. Quarterback ISO uh, reading uh, the, the stretch of the defensive line, pulling the ball out of the running back's belly and running up inside behind his lead blocker, wrapping around on the ISO play up on the linebacker. Uh, big game, or, uh, with big games last week for him, against uh, Sam Houston State. Empty backfield. Lavelle McCullers, third and five. To keep this drive alive, he'll toss one out. He's got a man there who has to run under it, and he cannot. That was Cadrell Hodge out there trying to run a fly route, and overthrowing him was uh, the quarterback, uh, McCullers, just didn't have him in the bead, floated it out there, not really able to get uh, the ball in the vicinity of the route that Hodge was trying to run. So two, three, two straight three and outs. Force this punt situation. Houlihan, again with good hang time, takes a Nichols bounce at the 30 and we'll give the Colonels a few extra yards before it's down and we'll see Chase Forcade for the second time here in this first quarter of play with 12.01 to go. You know, credit that Nichols defense right there for getting that three and out. Uh, uh, Purview trying to stretch the field a couple times, trying to do the same things Nichols did when they had the interception back on their first series, trying to stretch the field. Uh, it, it's it's kind of like two heavyweight fighters trying to set each other up for the big uh, knockout. So you're going to have to pick and peck throw deep to try to stretch, throw horizontal to try to stretch width-wise, move people in and out of the box to try to pick your, uh, pick your spots where you're going to try to uh, uh, move the ball the best you can. Big game for the Colonels, not only because it's family day here and they want to put on a good performance, but they had a great game two weeks ago here, opening the season against McNeese, conference game, they beat the Cowboys for the first time in eight years. And Coach Timmy Rebo and all of the fans felt that like that was a major step for this Nichols program. Well, it puts them 1-0 in the, in, the, in the Southland Conference. You know, it puts them right up there at the top. And as they're, you know, going against two non-conference opponents the past two weeks, Texas A&M last week and, of course, uh, Prairie View this week, uh, it, it's going to give them, it gave them momentum going into Texas A&M. And if they can get this one today, just think about the momentum going two and one into Sam Houston State next week. Prairie View had their first season game canceled because of Hurricane. Uh, <laughs> we've had so many, you can't think of the names. Harvey. <laughs> Hurricane Harvey, that's right. And that's, and, that's, and that's sad. And our thoughts and prayers are definitely with those folks in uh, uh, southwest Texas and southeast Texas over there. So that was a big opener for them last week at Sam Houston. First and 10 of the 36 toss out. Caught by Stephen LaBeouf, the tight end, pushed out of bounds. Nice little play action right there. LaBeouf runs a little flat route, gets himself open. He gets uh, uh, an advantage on the defender right there, and 4K puts it right on the money for a nice gain, which is going to bring up about second and six. Forgate working from the gun, which he does about 90% of the time. Gets the call from the sideline. Trips for the Colonels down low. They'll keep it on the ground. 
Urban stood up, pushed back short of the first down. Tell you what, that is one large defensive line. Prairie View lines up on the field. Right there leading that charge was big number 90, Willie Green, 6'3", 245, redshirt junior. And he's the smallest. And he's the smallest <laughs> because also lining up with him is James Harper, 6'3", 310, and Devon Reed, 6'2", 265, who was a three-year All-Southwestern Conference uh, player. So the Colonels trying to keep a drive alive on third and short. Caught. Jarrell Rogers for the first down across the 50 in Prairie View A&M territory. Tell you what, standing in against the heat, coming off the edge right there uh, for for uh, Prairie View was their uh, nickel, uh, Arthur Lockhart, who was just breathing down the throat, and Chase Forcade stands right in there, delivers the pass on the money on the little uh, little curl route right there to Jarrell Rogers. That's what I'm saying about Chase Forcade. He stands in against pressure. He's a winner. That's what you like to see from your quarterback. When you talk to him, he's just so cool. It's You get the feel that nothing bothers him. And he's proven that against the FBS teams on the schedule. Quick play action. He's got a man streaking down. Jean-Pierre out of bounds before he can reach the end zone. But what a throw and catch by Damian Jean-Pierre from Chase Forcade. Tell you what, he got a step. Right there, number 20 mi- 25, Willie Miles, who was playing man coverage. They throw the nine route, or what is not commonly known as the fade route, and he puts it right on the money for a big game, puts him down uh, on the five-yard line. First and goal, Colonels. Colonels got lined up quick. Somebody from the Panthers jump. Flag is down. Might have pass interference along with the offside. So hold everything. Well, they got the free play right there, and we'll hear from our uh, Southland Conference official here. First time we hear from the Southland Conference officials, our referee tonight is Eddie Kelly. The umpire is Brian Lyles. This is a full Southland Conference officiating crew. So they accept the pass interference, move the ball. It's going to be first down, uh, half the distance to the goal line, and the Colonels will line up and play first down again. We've got a lot of weapons down there for the Colonels, including big Kyron Irvin, the running back. Keep your eye on number 17. That's Stephen LaBeouf, the tight end. They like to go to him in short yardage situations with the short pass. This time, four kids throwing the other way and there's a flag down again intended for Raheem Falcons the out of Alabama transfer well they're working over there on number two Damon Jackson a six foot 210 pound senior each time Damon Jackson just gets his hands all over the receiver to commit his second uh, infraction and uh, they'll move it again half the distance to the goal first down again Yeah, if you know you're going to get beat down there, not a bad idea. Take the pass interference penalty and make them earn it on the ground. And Irvin right up the middle earns it on the ground. Colonels get the first score of the ball game. Karen Irvin just ducks his shoulders and bowls over anything in a white jersey to get it into the end zone, puts Nichols up on the board. 6 nothing. Nice drive, nice passing by the Colonel offensive attack right there. Great job, Chase 4K. Great job by those receivers running great routes and an offensive line being able to protect them. Loran Fonseca has been a breath of fresh air for the Nichols special teams. He is a strong-legged kicker and won the McNeese game on the last play of the game. Chase 4K drove the Colonels down the field and gave Fonseca the chance to win it with a field goal, and Fonseca drilled it split the uprights, and uh, came, I think, into his own a little over two weeks ago on the Thursday night opener, August 31st, when the Colonels defeated McNeese. Well, coming in today, he's three for three on all his field goals. The longest is his 37-yard field goal. The winning kick against McNeese was 32 yards, and he's four for four on his PAT. So uh, he's got a little ice water in his veins in a day where uh, – uh, you're watching all these uh, college games and you're watching all these pro games, kickers having problems putting between the uprights. 10.04 to play in the first. Colonels up. Set.
27 to nothing. A five play, 64 yard drive. Took a minute, 57 seconds. As Urban crashed into the center of the line from one yard out for the touchdown. Already the Colonel's offense racking up 57 passing yards uh, to seven yards rushing. And uh, uh, we coming into the game, uh, Coach Revol did tell us that he was going to have to be able to throw the ball today because of the size of that uh, large Prairie View defensive line, as we've already noted. We haven't seen Lavelle McCullers use his feet the way we expect to see him use his feet in this ball game. And that's one of the things that Coach Tim Rebo and these Colonels were worried about. This is a young man that can beat you with his feet. He can hurt you very deep. From five yards deep, Prairie View is going to take it out. A little bit for Darius Floyd on the return. Tell you what, great coverage right there by Joel Dullery, number 12, a defensive back from New Orleans, your alma mater, Holy Cross High School. We yeah. saw this young man play in high school as one of the better uh, safeties uh, coming out of the city of New Orleans a couple years ago. Chose to come down here and play at Nichols State, was excited about it, and I know the Colonels, talking to Coach Rebo, when they got the opportunity to sign him, they said, man, we got a diamond in the rough, and there was a uh, uh, great example of right there, uh, doing a great job on special teams, running the field and making a great open field tackle. Punt returner for the Colonels also, and just a bear on special teams, as they like to say. It's been two three and outs for the Prairie View a and Panthers. McCullers with his third running back behind him, Caleb Broach. And Broach right up the middle. Get some positive yardage for the Panthers and the first down on the first carry. Initial first down of the game coming here for Prairie View on their third possession with 9.50 to play in the first. Well, uh, Laren James steps right up in the hole, fills the hole nicely, just misses the tackle right there. Nice run on a sweet play by the Panthers for a nice pickup. Broach, 5'9", 230 pounds, a junior. He's very low to the ground, and when he gets that handoff, He's tough. He can build up ahead of steam. He's going to air one out. And this one picked off. Oh, almost by Darrell Adams. He got a hand on it and dropped it late. But what a recovery for, because for just a moment, it looked like the Panthers wide receiver, Joshua Simmons, fastest man of the team, had beaten everybody, and he had, but the ball was underthrown by McCullers. Well, he, he did have a step. It was a great post route right there, and McCuller, McCullers puts it right on the money. Uh, but you saw Darrell Adams at the last second step up, get a hand in there, and rip it out, and we thought right there, coming down, he might have had the pick. Great play defensively. Good call on first down after you get the initial first down to try to go deep and stretch that offense. Here comes Broach again right up the middle, and fumble picked up by the Colonels. Returned. Look out. Here goes Christian Butte, and the officials will call it down. Well, well are they <laughs> calling it down before the fumble or down after the fumble? I think they're going to call him down before the fumble. It looked like he was down. The, uh, the old uh, adage that uh, you'd have to really see it on a replay possibly to look at it if you could see, but I believe his knee was down. Ball pops out, and Johnny on the spot right there. Uh, was Christian Butte picking it up and rolling. But uh, they call it down, and it was a nice pickup on the inside zone by Prairie View A&M. Caleb Broach, the answer, maybe, for Prairie View and running back because since coming into the game, they've reeled off three first downs. They're going to look at it, I believe, to see if it was actually down. I saw Timmy Rebold down there ripping his headsets off. You know, what is it with coaches and headsets? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, you know, got to take it. The headset didn't do anything, but Timmy rips them off. He's screaming. They're going to want to take a look at it. And uh, uh, the conference officials are going to take a look at it to see if possibly there could have been a mistake on the call. When you were coaching, you never did tell me what your headset budget was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to be honest with you, Ken. In 35 years, I only broke one set. One set. Per game, per no, week? No, 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 no. One set in 35 One set in 35 years. 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 One set in 35 That's years. That's a discipline. That's a discipline. Uh, yeah. That's Dale Carnegie. <laughs> <laughs> 
But this play is under review. And the headsets are on with referee Eddie Kelly. Well, I if I'm a betting man, ball was down, running was down, and it was first down per review. Here comes the call. There you go. I'm one for one today. Ruling on the field stands, says Eddie Kelly, and it's first down Prairie View A&M. They have to mount a drive right here, uh, not to fall too far behind the Colonels as they did last week when they fell behind 24-3 to to Sam Houston and then found themselves playing catch-up all game. Right. Well, let's, let's go back to the play mm -hmm. and the fumble for a second. Caleb Broach does a great job reading the inside zone right there. He hits a crease and he gets vertical for the first down. It just happened to pop out at the end. Empty backfield after the shift, sending Broach to the line. McCullers with his feet. Good stop. Ankle tackle. I believe that was number 95, Devin, Devin Seminole. Seminole from East Ascension High School right there, working his way down the line of scrimmage. Uh, another zone read right there uh, by McCullers. He pulls the ball out, and he follows the, uh, follows the uh, offensive lineman leading him up into the hole. Second down nine. Seminole don't make that tackle. It would have been second and a whole lot shorter than that. Quick pass. And a quick tackle by Joel Dullery. Well, right there off the play action pass, they're hitting the seam route right there. They hit the number two receiver in the seam for a short gain. It's going to bring up third and five right here. Look for some sort of zone read option play again from McCullers. Third and short. Zarian Holocomb on that last reception. Now you've got Bell, sets over on the right side, passes hard and a little high for the intended receiver. They move the pocket right there to try to get McCuller some room out there to throw. So they sprint him out to his right right there. And on the curl route, he throws the ball with it's just a little bit too mustard on that hot dog. And it just squirts right through the receiver's <laughs> hands, right over his head. Uh, Nichols sitting in a zone coverage right there, doing a nice job uh, supplying some sort of pressure with their front four also. Line of scrimmage right at midfield. Houlihan. It's a beauty. Dullery will let it sail over his head. Takes another Colonel bounce, but this one's downed after only about two yards. Downed by Zarian Holocomb. You know, to what? Hula has a nice little arsenal of weapons in his punting uh, uh, weapon tree. He does his little rugby kick, and right there he did his end over end uh, pin you down inside the 10 yard line kick where it's going to bounce up and try to die uh, uh, deep in the Colonel. Uh, uh, territory um, I'm impressed with the guy he only coming in last week with a 28 yard average but so far today he's been a pretty good weapon for Prairie View had a shank or two last week that hurt him first pass to Jarrell Rogers and he's upended immediately for not much tell you what he is upended over there by number 26 from Prairie View and that is Jew Anthony Parker Jew Anthony Parker 5'11", 165-pound sophomore, comes up on the screen, makes a nice play, gets off the block, and puts the receiver right to the ground with a nice tackle. Lost two on that second down, 12. Forcade with play action, has someone on the inside, and Christian Booker has a first down after a nifty catch and move. Well, Prairie View brings Blitz off of uh, 4K's right side. He goes the other way with it and gets rid of the ball, but they were playing zone behind it. So it was a zone blitz with uh, no pressure being applied to the receiver getting off the line of scrimmage. Easy catch, easy throw. Irvin hit in the backfield and just has nowhere to go. Stuck in the backfield right there by number 54. Uh, Jalen Williams, he's a linebacker, six foot, 235 pound senior, steps right up in the hole and makes a nice play. Yeah. 
Second down for the Colonels, 11. For Cade. Pointing out for someone to block the blitzer, and he did. Nice spinning catch. Oh, he missed it. Damian Jean-Pierre looked like he had it for just a moment. Tell you, on a play, Jalen Harris, nice job right there. Again, Prairie View coming with the zone blitzes off the outside corner, trying to apply some pressure to uh, Forcade. Picked up very nicely by the offensive line of Nichols to give him a chance to step up in the pocket and deliver the curl route. But tell you right there, nice hands, breaking up the ball, racking the hands, and raking the hands of the receiver was Jalen Harris, number 23. And now you're looking at third down 11. Spot where you haven't seen Nichols much so far today, behind the chains. 4K, lots of time, good protection. He'll air one out for Jean-Pierre, overthrows him. Jean-Pierre again had a step on Jalen Harris, but the ball was a little off target, just over the height uh, of Jean-Pierre and forces Nichols into a punting situation. Tyler St. Germain, an excellent punter for the Colonels. Got a career average of about 40. Gets good leg into it. Goes for the sideline punt. And that stops any return by Donwa Tucker. You know, Ken, you see it now. You see it in the NFL. You see it in all the way down to the high schools, colleges down to the high schools, directional punting. You know, and not punting the ball straight down the middle of the field is high with hang time and putting pressure on your coverage teams because these athletes they have back there catching those punts, they can go at any time. You know, the old way was hang it high, hang it deep. Now it's about directionally kicking that ball, making the returner have to run sideline to sideline and trying to push your coverage down into that direction. Well, you're trying to flip the field, and if somebody returns at 25 yards on a 40-yard punt, it's not much of a flip. That is correct. Absolutely. McCullers scrambles, throws as he's hit, just throws it away. Here comes a flag that might be might be intentional grounding. I don't think there was a receiver in the area, but let's see. Came out immediately. I didn't quite see that signal. I, I would I would think, uh, unless they picked the flag up, maybe they might have done that second down. But he was chased out of the pocket by. Uh, yeah, he was out of the pocket. Right. So you can you can throw it there. The, the ball right. went past the line of scrimmage, and yes. he was out of the pocket. And I think that's why the flag was picked up. Alan Pittman was applying the pressure, and so was Tyler Johnson. Pittman was uh, the guy that was to contain him off of the edge and not let him just run freely out there. And he did a nice job. Almost tripped him up. McCray is the running back. He had a different running back on every series to keep him fresh. Here's a handoff to Darius Floyd, who's a wide receiver and likes to take it on the end of the round. The Colonels weren't fooled, and they stuff him for a loss. Corey Abraham comes up and sets the edge. You know, you've heard me talk about it tons of times, kids. Uh, Ken, the, the, the secret to a good defense is who is setting that edge, whether it's a defensive end, whether it's a linebacker, or whether it's a safety coming up in force or a corner. Right there, it was Corey Abraham, six foot 200 junior from Brobridge High School, setting that edge, making a great play. Now on third down with Prairie View behind the chains. McCray the running back. McCullers throws it over the head of his receiver. And he just doesn't look comfortable in that quarterback position up to this point. Well, his intended receiver is right, right there with Zarian Holcomb, a tight end, 6'6", 235, and he was just not comfortable. He kind of dropped his elbow down there and slinged the ball out there, and the ball floated over the head, which is going to put him in another punting situation. Had a, lot of, had a lot of time, Ken. Just didn't look comfortable with where his receivers were. Credit Nichols secondary for good coverage. Houlihan with the punt almost blocked, just got it off. Dullery with the fair catch. And again, that's what both uh, coaches were talking about before the game. They said quarterback decision-making is going to be so key in this football game today, and it's proving to be just that. 
Ooh, we've got a one-score ball game. We've got a seven-nothing Nichols lead with 4:28, a little over four, a little under four and a half, to play here in this first quarter. At Nichols, I'll tell you what, Ken, that ball was one smidgen away from being blocked by Lyron James. He was right there. His hand just barely missed that ball. He comes unobstructed off of uh, the punting team's right edge and almost blocks that right back into the kicker's face. From the Colonel 25, Chase 4K at quarterback. Play action will toss to the left side, and that is to Raheem Falcons, and he bobbled it incomplete. Off a little play action right there, trying to hit the hitch route, and 4K just doesn't have it on the right accuracy level. He puts it into the ground at the feet of his receiver. You know, this this is the situation where they don't want to be in, where they're getting into these second and longs, because now it's forcing an offense to have to be very, very multiple in the calls that they have to make in order to pick up 10 yards or further. Prairie View with a lot of people on the line showing everybody coming. Flag down, play blown dead. Irvin had room as it was just an all-out blitz by Prairie View. Illegal procedure is going to back it up. It'll be second and 15. And again, behind the chains, that isn't where you want to be. You know, they're an up-tempo offense. They're trying to speed things up. They're doing a lot of check with me on the sideline to keep them out of a bad situation. The call is coming down from the press box, reading the front, reading the coverage, and then they're signaling the play in to 4 Second and 15 at the 20. Forcade steps into the pocket. He's going to throw long. He's got man coverage, and it's incomplete. Intended for DeGene Dixon, the freshman. Flag is down. Flag thrown near the point of the reception. Where well, you're going to have a flag back up at the top on the, uh, uh, from the line judge. Uh, an offsides call will probably be what we see from Prairie View down here. But down here, I'm thinking and I'm looking at it as possible offensive interference by the Nichols receiver going over the back and holding the jersey of uh, the defender uh, from Prairie View. Yeah, Dejean Dixon, the pass was over his head, and I think he thought it was going to be intercepted, and he just wanted to break that up. Well, Jalen Harris from Prairie View had great coverage, and uh, Dejean Dixon, I tell you what, was trying to go get the ball, but there's a lot of – it looked like a big-time wrestling match down there with a two-point takedown, taking each other's jerseys off of each other. So don't be surprised if you get an offensive interference call here. But possibly nullified by the offsides at the top of the play from Prairie View defensive lineman. I believe that was big Willie Green. The referee, Eddie Kelly. Oh, my. Holy smokes. They, uh, they, they called the interference also on uh, Jalen Harris, which, uh, ouch. <laughs> I don't know if I quite agree with that call. So um, they'll mark off, I'm sure, the interference penalty, and, uh, and it'll be uh, the automatic first down. So, so with that, we've got a timeout. So let's take a brief timeout here, and we'll be back right after this with more Colonels leading by 7, 416 to play here in the first quarter. They reset the clock in, so. Okay, we're back. Colonels leading 7-0 over Prairie View, and the Colonels are going to take the 15-yard penalty for interference. Well, I, right. Well, it, 
they're not spotting the ball there. I'm, I'm not. I'm not getting one. Maybe did they pick up the interference call and they took the offsides and it brings it back to second and ten from where it was second and fifteen. That's looked like what happened and they re put time back on the clock. So maybe the um, the penalty was before the snap of the ball and the play was blown dead. Irvin right up the middle. He's got the first down. Doesn't matter. Doesn't Just matter. made up for it. Kyron Irvin. <laughs> well, that's what you do. I mean, you don't get the call you want, whatever the case may be. Just give it to Irvin. He runs inside zone, and they're picking up tempo. Fast-paced. Toss out to the right side. Mason Roberts is hit hard. Will Skinner. Or was that Sonny Williams on the hit? Sonny Williams. Sonny Williams coming up and just laying the lead right there on the quick screen out there. Uh, tell you what, came up and stuck that shoulder pad right. I mean, a nice form tackle. That's the way you play the corner and set the edge. Second down, 12 after the loss of two, and that big hit by Sonny Williams. Irvin trying to pick a spot to run to and made something out of nothing, getting the lost yardage back and a little bit more, bringing up third down and long for the Colonels. James Harper comes off a block right there and just levels uh, Kyron, Kyron Irvin right there with a great tackle gets up saying don't run the ball up in here anymore tell you what big guy six foot 310 I bet you he can uh, fill it up when he goes to that post game meal after the ball game I watched the big tall 64 senior Raheem Falcons at the top of your screen he's the Alabama transfer not looking for him though there's the toss to Jarrell Rogers Rogers taking it to the house touchdown Colonels. Tell you what, Jarrell Rogers right there runs a great seam route right there, and Chase Forcade puts it right on the money. Prairie View is in zone coverage right there. Hit him right between the safety and the underneath coverage of the linebacker, the seam route, and there was no way they were going to catch him once he had the ball in his hands. Great throw, great catch, great route, great call by the Colonels' offensive staff. The only thing left is for Fonseca to add the point 62 yards and the score and Fonseca makes it look easy Nichols leading 14 to nothing with just under three minutes to play in the first quarter well this crowd was waiting for something to happen from their colonels to sort of ignite the crowd and they just got it on that 62 yard touchdown play 4K to Mason Roberts. Well, it took him five plays, 75 yards in a minute, 45 seconds, but that was a nice 62-yard completion right there. As I said, hitting the seam route off the play action kind of drew the safety up. And uh, I tell you what, wide open in the seam, catching the ball, and just being able to outrun the secondary. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, our entire stream crew will talk about these guys who have done a great job making this happen on the very last minute so you could watch Nichols football and Pro Review football tonight. And it's been an exciting game from a Colonel standpoint. Pro Review's offense, much like last week, a little slow to get on track in this game. Fonseca to boot it. He's put two very deep into the end zone. The last one, an attempted run back by Darius Floyd. This time, Floyd will just back out of the end zone and give his offense an opportunity with that football in pretty good field position. Well, I mean, if, if you're looking at the stats so far as we're coming to the end of the first quarter with 2.43 left, I mean, it, it's it's completely lopsided, especially from the standpoint of first downs, yards, uh, 
uh, yards passing, uh, those sort of things. So uh, Prairie View, kind of like last week, started slow down at San ha Sam Houston State. Nickel State just can't let down here. They've got to continue applying pressure to get this high-powered offense in thirds and longs and seconds and longs in order to be able to uh, continue dominating. Dewana Tucker, the running back, and he'll float out of the backfield, spin around, and the uh, ball doesn't go to Dewana. Looked like it was going to him and instead was caught by Kalen Riles, the redshirt freshman. I like how McCullers right there goes to a second receiver on the underneath route. A little mesh route between the number two receivers from both sides of the field crossing each other underneath the linebacker coverage, and he goes to uh, the second receiver on his right for a nice pickup. McCullers with the handoff straight ahead to Tucker. Runs into a wall, pushes for a few. You've got three running backs all returning from last year, and Stephon McRae, Dewana Tucker, who's in on this series, and Caleb Broach, and Coach Willie Simmons does a great job of just keeping fresh legs in the game for the Prairie View Panthers by substituting a different running back on almost every series. One gets hot, he may stay in for a second or a third series, but he likes the fresh legs. McCullers with the fake and the keep. Didn't fool anybody for the Colonels and the front line gang tackles that was led by Terrell Uncalad and others. Well, I'll tell you what, it was like running into a red wall right there. Uh, the offensive line from Prairie View didn't block anybody. Not a very good job up front right there. And, and those guys have got to get going in order to be able to get keep their uh, uh, RPOs and their run pass options uh, uh, successful. It's going to bring up a fourth and short. It's going to be interesting to see what they're going to do here deep in their territory. You look across that offensive line, there's a sophomore, a true freshman, a sophomore, and two juniors. No seniors. A lot of experience graduated off the offensive line for Prairie View, and they get stuck in situations like that, get stuffed, no first down, and the Colonels hold and will take over on downs. Well, uh, run pass option right there, read option right there for uh, McCullers, and he pulls the ball and try to get, tries to get it on their own. He, it's like taking a hello picture of a defensive line from Nichols right there. He runs right into Terrell, Terrell Anclard and Tevin Lawson. I think Sonny Lesh was in on that. And I tell you what, they all smack him down, and they lose a yard on that fourth down play. Nichols takes over in great field position. Tell you what, look for Nichols right here to go up top on this play. That's what I would do. <laughs> right here, a little momentum. I'd take a shot right here and uh, see what we can get. Watch the bottom of your screen. Damian Jean-Pierre from Rummel High School where he played with Chase Fourcade for a few years, but instead they go to Irvin, who somehow busts through the line, breaks a tackle, now another, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown, Kyron Irvin, who broke a tackle at the line, or maybe two, and then broke two open field tackle attempts as he fights his way to the end zone for the score. Right, and here's a good look at it. The inside zone play, they got in the end zone not the way I would have done it. I would have taken that shot, but any way you look at it, they get in the end zone. You're going to see the inside zone play right here. And great blocking by that Nickel State offensive line to allow him to pop that into the secondary. And a couple missed tackles later, another six points on the board for the Colonels. There you go. Good look at that missed tackle right there. And then watch him wander away from the secondary. Wow. Fonseca adds the extra point. And it's 21-0, Colonels. But before you say this one may be a blowout, remember last week this same Prairie View team fell behind at Sam Houston, the number three team in the country, uh, perennial powerhouse in the Southland Conference, and then rallied, and Sam Houston had to hold on for an eight-point win, 41-33. Sam Houston led at one point 24-3. Well, I mean, they've got weapons. You know, it, it's you, – you've got to keep playing the game. You, you know, you've got to keep your eyes on what you're supposed to be reading as a defense. You've got to make sure you're where you're supposed to be as a defense. Uh, you've got to understand that your opponent on the other side of the field has athletic talent and they can uh, score on big plays and uh, make things happen. And, uh, and I'm sure understanding uh, – uh, Tim Rebo and, of course, the defensive corner 
uh, coordinator from uh, Nichols, Tommy Rybaki, will make sure that he is intensified on the boundary, reminding them of what they saw in film all week uh, from the Prairie View A&M Panthers. Ask it, Timmy Rebo, how did you get the attention of your team after such a heartbreaking loss at Texas A&M and FBS school? And he said, we saw the score. We watched them come back. We watched them put 451 yards up of total offense, and we saw what they could do when they were behind by 21 points, which is the Nichols' lead right now. Well, the Colonels know <laughs> Sam Houston State very well, and they know yes. what type of team they have. So watching Prairie Review put those type of yards on Sam Houston State will get your attention real quick. Floyd may have a return on this one from the four-yard line. He'll take it to the short side. And get a good return out near the 25-yard line. Tell you what, great coverage on <laughs> that kick right there by Austin Dickerson, a reserve defensive back, 5'9", 170, uh, redshirt sophomore from Destrahan High School in Destrahan, Louisiana. You're familiar with that. Home of the Wildcats and Steve Robichaux. Had a big win last night against the John Errett Patriots. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They needed that one after coming off the loss to Frankie Monica and his St. Charles Catholic Comets the week before. School that always has major colleges, FBS and FCS schools recruiting their people. Well, that's a run right into. Well, let's see, was that Lazary, Larry Ona? Or that, that was somewhere? Lazarus Ona. Lazarus Ona. Yeah, it was. Big nose tackle from the Colonel sitting right there, getting off of the block of that offensive line. Now, that offensive line is a little inexperienced for the Prairie View A&M Panthers, and Lazarus Ona does a great job shedding the block, sitting right there and making a great tackle on, I believe that was Caleb Broach. Broach is the running back for this offensive series. Willie Simmons was worried about the Nichols defensive front against his inexperience. All of his seniors graduated off. There's not one senior starting on this offensive line for Prairie View A&M. And with that, the first quarter has come to an end. After one quarter of play here in Thibodeau, the Nichols State Colonels, or the Nichols Colonels rather, not state any longer, Nichols Colonels lead Prairie View A&M 21 to nothing. We'll be back right after this. Are you running any Southland Conference stuff? Are you ready for us? Yeah. After one quarter of play here at John L. Guidry Stadium in Thibodeau, Louisiana, Nichols leads it by the score of 21 to nothing. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, and it's been all Colonels and all Chase Forcade. Chase was intercepted on the first series but came right back with a 62-yard touchdown pass to Mason Roberts. Kyron Irvin has scored twice on beautiful runs of 34 and one yard run. And that's how the Colonels have scored their points. Trying to set up a screen right there to Caleb Broach, but I tell you what, stepping up and just a step away from a pick was Larry and James, the linebacker. If he would have caught that ball, uh, if he would have had the opportunity, no one would have touched him. It would have been pick six right there. You know, coming out of the first quarter, Ken, if you look at the statistics, it's just really lopsided. You know, uh, eight first downs by Nichols to two from Prairie View, uh, and the rushing yards are, are, are completely lopsided also, as well as the passing yards. So uh, uh, dominating statistically, dominating score, the Colonels right now uh, are very dominating. 
Prairie View might have to count on LaBelle McCullers to use his feet and get way outside, start, start running the ball a little bit more and, and uh, either move the pocket or just let him go. Let him use his feet to beat or try to make plays, put points on the board. And Of course, the Colonels want to make sure that he doesn't beat them with his feet. I think they've got to get back to running what they do best, and it's how they put that 451 points on Sam Houston State last week. Yards. Uh, 450 points. <laughs> I said points, excuse me, yards, thank you. On uh, That would have been a lot of points. <laughs> <laughs> on on uh, Sam Houston State last week, simply from the standpoint of getting back into what they do best, get the ball in the hands of their athletes, running their RPOs, their read zone game, and, and let their athletes, as you say, get back to doing what they do best. They have an inexperienced offensive line. Let these guys kind of settle in a little bit, and that way they can get their offensive going. Third down, so... An important play for the Panthers to keep this alive. Broach will shift over. Four-man rush. He's in trouble, and he dumps it off fast and underthrown, incomplete. Kenny Dotson applying the pressure right there. 6'3", 250-pound junior out of Plaquemine High School. Does a great job beating the uh, offensive tackle at the top of the uh, formation for Prairie View that was Sean Pierce coming off the edge with a speed rush and right there reaching out with a big paw and getting a hold of McCullers' shoulder and uh, not allowing McCullers to have a free uh, passage to throw the football. He has to throw it in the ground. Houlihan with about a 37-yard average, though it was a little less last week because of the shank, needs a good one here. Dullery calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 40-yard line of the Colonels. Good field position once again for Nichols to start this second quarter. Well, they've had great position. You know, they, uh, uh, they've started it uh, inside their 50 a couple of times. They started it uh, uh, inside, uh, should I say, inside the Purview 50 a couple of times, and now they're starting it right at uh, the Colonel 40-yard line. This is great position. You couldn't ask for anything better to be able to use the full force and effect of your offensive arsenal to be able to uh, choose from that play sheet as an offensive coordinator. And I'm sure Rob Christopher, the offensive coordinator, likes this so he can just pick and peck the way he wants to at this point on the field. Panthers showing blitz, so 4K goes with the quick toss to Christian Booker, who does a spin move and is finally spun out of, round, out of bounds, rather. Tell you what, right there, I saw a great pursuit out of a uh, Panther uh, defense right there, coming inside out, coming up. The corner sets the edge, as I've said before. That was number uh, 36, it looks like, with that yellow jersey on down there. That's hard to see from up here. It's going to get tougher as the night goes on, yeah, exactly. but it's and a it's, challenge. And I'm getting older, too. That's number 30, Sonny Williams, coming up. He made a great edge with great inside-out pursuit. Irvin just picks his way near midfield and close to the first down, but just short. Same play, different formation that he popped a long run on the in the first quarter from inside zone. Pops it right up the A-gap right there. Nobody there. Linebacker was out of the way and blocked. Nice pickup. Third and short. There's your play action. Quick toss on the slant end to Booker, and he's got the first down at the 40-yard line. Or mark it at the 39 for the Panthers. Tell you what, 4K puts it on a money right there. Booker beats uh, Sonny Williams to the inside right there, and I tell you what, there was only one place to put the ball, and 4K put it there right in his hands. Chase 4K showing the maturity as a sophomore of a quarterback that should be a junior or a senior. That's just how much of a film study person he is. Jarrell Rogers breaking tackles after making the catch and getting the first down and would look like it might be a no-gain catch. Well, again, they, they've tried this two or three times. The quick uh, wide receiver screen out there, trying to get the one-on-one -on -one block on the corner. Safety coming up to make the play. Safety didn't make the play, and that allows the receiver out there to be able to break the play, pick up the first down, and go down the boundary. First down knocking on the door of the red zone. There's that wide receiver screen. Jarrell Rogers again dancing around. Can't break the tackle. He'll get a few. Run the same play again the other way, except they bring the third receiver out there, and they get two blockers out there in front of Jarrell Rogers, who gets wrangled up and tackled by an inside-out pursuit from the uh, Prairie View defense. Second down at the 26-yard line. Colonels driving, leading by three touchdowns. Give to Jeremy Rounds his first carry of this ball game, and Rounds is near first down yardage, but 
They'll spot him down at the 21-yard line. Jeremy Rounds, a local boy from right here in Thibodeau, Louisiana, E.D. White High School, uh, gets his first carry on a draw play right there and uh, does a nice job bringing it down to third and three for the Colonels. Have you noticed how they're picking up their tempo here? Picking up the tempo and Corkade signaling that now. Sending David Mosley in motion. And here's the give. And it's once again Kyron Irvin, the starting running back, got a breather from rounds for just a moment. He's back in there and picks up the first down for Nichols. Staying with the inside zone running game, the short passing game out on the edge. They're quickly churning up yards right now, trying to get down inside that red zone. Borcade on first down. He's got two wide outs. Everybody else in tight. He'll go down to Booker on the near side, and Booker run out of bounds. They fake the inside draw, hit Booker on a little stop route right on the edge, and they're down inside the 10-yard line, down inside that Colonel red zone, uh, ready to be able to put some more points on the board because if you notice how they're picking up the tempo, applying a lot of pressure now to that Prairie View defense who seems to be a little bit winded out there. Look at time of possession in just a moment, and the Colonels, because of the three and outs early in this game, have dominated the time of possession so far in this first half. And we're at the 11 and a half minute mark of the first half, and this is Rounds who will pick his slot and then take it to the end zone for the touchdown. Rounds, touchdown, Nichols. Rounds does a nice job picking his way through there. He does a little jump cut at the line of scrimmage, squirts to his wife right and then he sees straight ahead nothing but daylight into the Nichols end zone touchdown Colonels nine so, yard run by Jeremy rounds and again as Fonseca kicks the point if you have not been hearing the word or the name Dontrell Taylor that's because he was injured in the Texas A&M game last week that's the starting running back for the Colonels, and he will not play tonight, but should be ready, or at least they're hoping he'll be ready for the conference opener next week. That was a nine-play, 60-yard, taking three minutes and 16 seconds off the clock, Ken. And what's that doing right now? Eating up that clock, scoring 28 points up to this point. They're at 9.38 on the time of possession in this ball game, as compared to an 8.50 uh, time of possession for, for, for Prairie View. Uh, again, just dominating the front line of scrimmage up front and uh, basically uh, dominating on the scoreboard with 28 points. You know, it feels like Nichols has had the ball longer than that and would have more than just a little over a minute advantage in time of possession, but I think it's because the Colonel scored so quickly on a few plays that the Pro Review offense was on the field, as, we, as you can see, just a little bit more than we expected it to be, but when you look at the numbers, there it is. Well, it's a human night down there, too. I mean, we, we were lucky past week or so we had some non-humid weather down here, but all of a sudden that humidity, South Louisiana humidity, has come back into play. And, uh, you know, right there, Nickel State's offense is picking up the uh, no-huddle uh, tempo, getting a lot of calls from the line of scrimmage to keep them out of bad situations on check with me from the sidelines. And... You look at the Prairie View defense, they're standing there with their hands on their waist, uh, a little bit, um, I guess you would say, the old words of uh, sucking air. And uh, right there, you can see how they took it to them up front. And, uh, you know, the result so far is 28 points on the board. Tucker and Floyd, the running back, Dwanya Tucker, along with Darius Floyd, deep. And this one is sent deep to Floyd. Two yards deep, he'll take it out. Has a seam. And Joel Dullery gets him from behind for the Colonels, pushing him out of bounds and making the stop. Purview does a nice job with a double in and a double out, what we call a, a, a double in, double out on the edge on a sideline return. And he hits that seam, and he's right down the uh, sideline right there. And then Dullery from the far side comes over and knocks him out of bounds. Well, Purview has to get something going 
on this offensive series. They have really been stymied, much of it because of that very inexperienced line. They're behind 28 to nothing, have the ball with decent field position at their own 34 to get things started. And McCullers has to use his feet, I think, just a little bit more. Dwanya Tucker, the running back, gets two on first down. Well, Dewanya Tucker is a fine running back. Last week, 13 attempts, 103 yards, a 7.3 yard average. They got to get him going. So let's let's feed these guys now. Let's let's put the ball in the hands of their athletes and and uh, take some pressure off that offensive line by the zone reads, uh, basically reading the down defensive lineman and making a decision off of him where you don't have to block him. Tucker again. Headed right into the pile, dove forward, and is across the 40-yard line. Bringing up third down and five. They're actually going to mark his knee down at the 39-yard line. Nickel States makes a defensive front change, uh, bringing in a whole different set of personnel right there. Uh, going to some sort of uh, maybe uh, jet front or... Uh, what, what is called a, uh, uh, a NASCAR front to try to get some pressure on in a passing situation. They go to a three-down defensive line front. One of the things Coach Willie Simmons of Pro Review was worried about was different looks by the Colonel defense, which is big and physical for an inexperienced, and uh, you hate to use the word, but it's true here, young offensive line. Oh, McCullers in trouble, and he's hitting the flag, goes down at the 30. Coming in with a hard hit was Kenny Dotson. Well, they went to that jet front or that uh, NASCAR front. Kenny Dotson comes in, makes a great play. The penalty is a holding penalty against uh, Prairie View. That's going to be declined. It'll bring up fourth down. And there's your different front that was brought in, Ken, that uh, you had talked to Coach Robinson about. And uh, uh, just the difference of a different kind of look for an inexperienced offensive line will put, lineman will put doubt in your mind real quick when that ball turns over and you've got to make split-second decisions. Kenny Dotson does a great job there with an inside swim move, comes through and gets the sack. The confidence of this Nichols team after the performance last week against Texas A&M and stemming back to all last year and what they accomplished. Here's another shank by Houlihan, and that's what uh, he suffered with last week at Sam Houston was a few shanks like that really hurting his 37, 38-yard average. And he got one of the worst possible time for the Panthers in this football game, giving Nichols real good field position at the Prairie View 49-yard line. Yes, he did shank that end over end, kicks it out of bounds for about a, um, looking at about 15 yard, 20, 15 to 20 yard punt right there, setting up Nichols in Prairie View territory again. No, 4 k uh, right now, statistically speaking, 12 completions, 169 yards and 16 attempts. He's thrown that one interception, but that one interception was way back into the in the first quarter. And uh, leading the way, receiving uh, Damien Jean-Pierre with uh, 42 yards only on one catch. But it's the mixture of the way he's spreading the ball around to his other receivers. Uh, that's doing a great job for that Nichols offense. And rushing, leading the way right there is Kyron Irving, who was doing a great job. Nine carries, 66 yards, uh, with a 7.2-yard uh, uh, average uh, right at this point now. And I tell you what, they're dominating from the standpoint of the offensive statistics versus the Prairie View offensive statistics, uh, time of possession and everything. Field possession, where they're taking over the ball, it's... Uh, Prairie View is going to have to make a stand here and try to make a statement and keep them out. Colonels need a game like this where everything is going right because they open up at conference play, Southland Conference play, at Sam Houston. Oh, and yes. That's <laughs> next week. <laughs> Absolutely. So well, they, they looked at film all week of them against Prairie View and Prairie View against them. It's hard to keep your team from not looking at, at Sam Houston State. They, you know, But apparently they did a good job of that. Keeping it on the ground, Jeremy Rounds just barrels through for a first down uh, all the way to the 37-yard line. Running the draw over there behind uh, Chandler Arsenault and Brian Hernandez, the big guard and right tackle. 
12 yard gain. Brings up second down, rounds again to the 30 yard line for a few more. Flag on the play. Let's start it out. Southland Conference officials tonight. Yeah, it, up. Yeah, right. it, it looked like a legal substitution. I think they got caught with uh, 12 men on the field, so uh, the gain was better than the uh, yardage on the illegal substitution, so th uh, the Colonels declined it. We haven't seen Raheem Falcons catch a pass. Only one thrown his way tonight. Colonels are going to keep this on the ground right now. Rounds, nowhere to go. Hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped. Tell you what, great job right there by the Prairie View defense. They brought an off-edge rusher who came straight down the line of scrimmage that time to make a stick right in the backfield. That was number 22, Jalen Coleman, a Will linebacker, came off his outside Willie linebacker position, came right down the line of scrimmage and tripped up the running back. And had help from Steven Scott in making the tackle. Third down, short yardage, third and two, four Cade once and all, going into the corner against double coverage. There's a jump up caught. Nope. Not caught, but an attempt at way down there, trying to go deep to David Mosley. Well, David Mosley had it in his hands for a second, Ken, is what you saw, and then at the last second it was ripped out by the secondary, who basically the safety coming over, and if I'm not mistaken, that was Raleigh Johnson coming across the top in a cover two look, ripping the ball out of his hands. Check that. They were trying to go to Dajeen Dixon, who's 6'4", and they thought they had the height advantage against two smaller defensive backs, and it didn't go. So the Colonels are going to call timeout before they send in Fonseca or uh, let Fonseca attempt this field goal. It would be a 40-yard field goal, goal for Fonseca. I think what they're talking over now is do they feel better about the 40-yard field goal or are they going to want to make sure – uh, they might even talk over putting their offense back out there and go for it on fourth and uh, looks like four. You know, that ball was right on the money right there. Chase 4K put it right on the money again, but it was a great play by the safety Raleigh Johnson coming across the top, ripping that ball out at the last second. I'll tell you what, right on the money, the ball. Uh, i tell you what, they had every opportunity to come down with another touchdown right there, but a great defensive play negated that. And you were trying to hit... A true freshman, Dajeen Dixon, from Edna Carr High School in New Orleans. So he's still making that step up into college football. And he's got to get used to being in a crowd like that. But pretty throw by Chase Forcade. Looks like they're going to stay with the field goal, Ken. They're going to attempt the 40-yard field. I like the call for the field goal right here. I think this gives your kicker great confidence if he hits it and uh, – because you're going to know down the line at Southland Conference, it's like the first week a field goal could win it for you. Well, this would be his longest of the year. Put down well at the 38. It's on its way. It is good. A 48-yard field goal by Fonseca, by Laurent Fonseca for the Nickel State Colonels, and he showed he's got range. It would have been good from another five to seven yards out. Well, it looks like he's got a 50-yard leg, 47-yard, 48-yard field goal right there. Ball was at the 30, and then you mark off uh, where they set uh, the ball down on the spot. And I tell you what, nice, nice online kick, had plenty of yardage. That's a big plus for the Colonels going down the line the rest of the season as they get into conference play. Let's take a break. We'll be back right after this. They're calling it a 47-yard field? Yeah, because the ball yeah. should be at seven yards from where the ball's placed on the ground. Yeah. Sometimes you'll get eight. Sometimes you'll get eight, but it's usually seven. The block point.
So it's a 47-yard field goal by Fonseca. 31-0 Colonels lead. And Fonseca is going to drive this one back, and uh, the Panthers decide not to return. Tell you what, what a weapon Fonseca is. They uh, kicking that 47-yard field goal week one, kicking that, uh, kicking that, uh, what was it, a 32-yard field goal against McNeese with uh, just seconds left on the clock for the win. These are all big gains for a young kicker. Uh, going down the road as they're going to start walking into the teeth of a tough Southland Conference. You know that drive there, five plays, 19 yards, minute 14 seconds, only took 31 seconds off the clock for the 47-yard field goal. Fonseca coming in from Hercules, California, Contra Costa Community College. A little bit stronger leg than David McKee, and his, that leg has, as you said, been a very welcome weapon here in Thibodeau for the Colonels. There's a good play left side. That was Joshua Simmons on the little swing screen out there from his uh, slot position where he bubbles back and McCullers puts it right on the money. They have a nice pickup for a first down. Simmons has been very quiet in this ball game. And again, fastest man on the team, one of the fastest in the Southwest Athletic Conference. And there's a toss to a wide open man in traffic. He's got the first down. He's got a lot more. And they finally used the big tight end, Cameron Smith, the senior. He got open. And look out, here comes McCullers and that wide open offense. You were expecting them to explode, and they can. Here is McCray finding room on the right side with the inside handoff and he's got extra room and the chains chains aren't set yet well, the officials let him snap the ball without the chains being set and they did well they've got to be a little game management right out there by the <laughs> white hat they're going to have to let the chains get set the chains weren't set so you won't know if this is <laughs> now the chains are getting in place Talk about picking up the pace of the offense. Perry View was going so fast, the officials in the chains couldn't keep up. Well, I, I get it. I understand what they're <laughs> trying to do and why they're trying to do it, but that's game management from the officials. They've got to make sure that those chains are set before they, now they're doing that. Now they're making sure they're set, but they were not set for the previous play. Well, the previous two, they're on right. the third down. They weren't set for first and second down. <laughs> right. They've stopped the clock. They're having a little conversation, trying to find out exactly where the chain should be. They should have never let the last two plays get off because of where the, uh, uh, the, the chain crew wasn't getting set up quick. You know, you, Chase crew's got to get in shape. They got to keep up with this Prairie View offense. <laughs> you know, a lot of good eating down here on the Bayou, Ken. Those guys probably, where did they go to eat prior before the game? They're finally a little jambalaya. They're uh, feeling a little weighted down over there. But, no, in all seriousness, that, uh, that um, headlines judge has got to make sure he blows the whistle and gets it set up and get those chains and the spot where it's supposed to be. But I tell you what, let's go back to that offense with uh, yes. uh, Prairie View and what they're doing now. We've been waiting right. to say, wh where has this offense been for most of the, well, all of the first quarter and, and, and up to here in the second quarter? Well, it started with a nice play selection uh, with the uh, uh, the big gain by Cameron Smith on the, uh, uh, it was a zone read tight end seam route where he hits the tight end right down the seam running through the middle of a too high secondary coverage of, of the Colonels with a huge big pickup. They hustle up there. Chains aren't set, and they run the inside zone there. And I think that was uh, Dewanya Tucker uh, for the pickup right there. And, and now there's the timeout, and they're trying to get all the chains all set up and everything of that nature, which is giving uh, both teams a chance to get a breather on a human night down there on uh, uh, Gidry Field. I'm going to credit Willie Stadium. Simmons and the offense. When you go so fast that the officials and the chain crew can't keep up, that's an effective offense, even though it took them this long to right. get here. Oh, yeah. right, it took them the first 15 minutes and, and another eight minutes in this quarter with seven on the clock to go before halftime. Took them a little while to get started. But, again, the same thing happened last week at right. Sam Houston State. It took them this long to get started and then start the rally. And uh, McCullers did it with his feet, did it with passing, and, Boy, you see he's got a pretty, real pretty throw on that ball. Well, when he throws with confidence and he stands there and throws with confidence, he, you know, he can really light it up. It's, it's about getting the confidence, and hopefully with that seam route, he might have picked up some confidence right there that will lead him on to the rest of the night and try to bring his offense back into this, which will bring, uh, you know, the Panthers back into the game. And it's all about the confidence thing. And I'm sure that's what 
their offensive coordinators are trying uh, to get done. Uh, Alan Jackson, their offensive coordinator, trying to put some confidence back into their uh, uh, quarterback, Lavelle McCullers. Watch the big tight end in the slot. Epps hasn't been used very much. It looks like they're going to have to go get a video to find out exactly where the down was to make sure they get the spot right because I'm sure both teams are talking about, no, the ball was set here. No, the ball was set there. So they're going down to the video right now to find out exactly where the spot should be so they can get the chains right. Well, thank goodness you've got a replay in college football where this can happen and they can get it spotted right. But once again, uh, the offense was in such a flow, such a rhythm, for right. Prairie View A&M that Correct. it got everybody caught up in it, in, <laughs> including the chain gang and the officials. So well, you know, if, if, stuff. if I'm Willie Simmons, I'm a little irritated at this. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it takes you out of your rhythm. So now they've been waiting around going on, what, maybe uh, uh, two minutes or longer, three minutes or longer, and it just has taken them completely out of their rhythm offensively because the officials didn't manage the game in order to get the chain set where they needed to. Willie Simmons, heck of a player at Clemson, a quarterback at Clemson for Tommy Bowden. I bet you there's some stories there, huh? After Tommy Bowden left Tulane in the undefeated year in 1998, and he goes to Clemson. Willie Simmons is is one of his quarterbacks. And he said uh, Simmons, such an intelligent student of the game, graduated in three years, and... uh, Tommy eventually had to make a decision in his senior year to sit him and let a guy named a freshman, an all-everything freshman named Charlie Whitehurst, quarterback. Remember that name. Played 14 years in the NFL, so you got to play him as a freshman, even if you don't know it at the time it's going to happen. And he said Willie Simmons took it in a most professional way. He stayed there. He was a cheerleader. He was a coach. He was ready to step in next man up if Whitehurst went down at Clemson. And uh, he says he have all the respect in this, in the world for Willie Simmons. And Simmons says he took so much from Tommy Bowden at Clemson that makes him the coach he is today. But he said, look, I can give you the X's and O's, but the thing I like best about Tommy Bowden is I took his faith. He was a man of faith, and he wasn't afraid to bring faith into the locker room and into the game plan and help these young men grow as men and as football players. Well, you know, it goes to his credit understanding that uh, um, sometimes coaches have to make decisions on personnel, and it might not be in your favor, but he took the the decision that Tommy Bowden made at that point, and he learned from it, and he uh, still had a role in the program. And and he's taken that, and he's brought it also into his coaching career from the standpoint of working with young men, uh, teaching selfishness and uh, those sort of things that uh, is all part of molding uh, young college students. He was recruited by Rick Stocksdale. And uh, he said, remembering his, uh, Bob remembered this, his best game as a Clemson quarterback was coming off the bench at North Carolina in Chapel Hill, way behind. Clemson's number three in the nation. He throws four touchdown passes, come from behind victory for Clemson. Greatest moment outside of playing before his mom in Tallahassee because he went to high school about 20 miles out of Tallahassee, but said, uh, his mom couldn't travel, and even though they didn't beat Florida State, having a great statistical night, lighting up the scoreboard and playing before his mom, those two games stand out the most in his mind. That's Willie Simmons. And by the way, this is his third year, just as it is Tim Rebo's third year right. at Nichols. And, folks, i got to tell you, uh, these two gentlemen are building programs. Now, you might not see it in these first uh, uh, quarter and a half, in the first half out of Pro Review, but you've got a little glimpse of how explosive they can be. Willie Simmons, the only coach in Pro Review history to have back-to-back winning seasons in his first two years. Last two SWAC conference records over the last two years, I should say, 15-3. And And two of the three are against Grambling in the State Fair game, which is played in Dallas. And look, not too many people beat Grambling. So his goal is... This year, you got to beat Grambling, then you have to win the SWAC. Well, Wait, it, hold on. We're getting, a, we're getting a call from. Okay, so we got a second down. I didn't quite tell here where they're going to mark the ball. Uh, second and 11. Right. So let's see. Uh, the yard line was a little tough to hear. 
So there we go. It's going to be right at about the 14, maybe the 13 and a half. Or I'm sorry, 18. My, my, my mistake about right about the 18-yard line uh, for the Panthers. But what it did is it just took them out of their rhythm, and I hate to see that because it could have been managed a lot better. Hardy is wide to the right. Watch your tight ends wide to the left. In trouble, McCullers goes down. He's sacked, and this is a team, the Colonels, who have had eight sacks over the first two games, and uh, they just picked up a ninth. Kenny Dotson right there all over it, picking up, uh, picking up the ninth, fumbling the ball. Colonels recover. Kenny Dotson all over that 6'3", 250-pound junior defensive end right there for a huge play, huge turnover. And, uh, you know, I can't, I can't help but to say, you know, Sitting around for the past three minutes, oh, it's figuring this that. out <laughs> longer than that, like you said. You know, it's a shame because I, I, I think Pro Review was had something rolling there and they were right clicking uh, in their offense. And uh, uh, it's just a shame to see that happen from mismanagement of, uh, uh, of the chains. Well, they're holding things up while they get the chains set now. <laughs> and. Uh, They've got them. Just under seven minutes to play in the first half. Nichols cruising 31 nothing. But again, just a reminder, Sam Houston, the number three FCS team of the country, was up 24-3 to last week. And Prairie View rallied, and Sam Houston had to hold on for an eight-point win, a touchdown and a two-point conversion win over this Prairie View team. So they're that explosive that they can come back, nothing going on that first down. It's been second down and 12 after the loss of two. Jalen Williams right there to make a nice stick. Uh, we'll bring up second and long behind the change for the Colonels. Nice job by Jalen Williams stepping up, making a nice play. Kyron Urban stays in at running back, and he'll flare out. Orcade under some pressure, picks out a man, has him for the first down on the right side. And that pass. That was to so number. To Stefano Garisco. Right, number 33. First time we're calling his name tonight. I tell you what, running a lot of nice routes, sitting down in these zones of Prairie View. Uh, Fourcade's picking them apart. First down. They try the middle, nowhere. Inside zone play right there to uh, Kyron Irvin. Had no place to go. Great job stepping up right there. Defensive line. Willie, Big Willie Green right there making a play in the center of that Prairie View defensive line. With this kind of lead, the Colonels, of course, I think would like to get to the locker room with one more score at least. But you're seeing a little bit of vanilla with the explosive arm of Chase Fourcade mixed in. Right off the play action, he'll just lob one out, shot over the head of the intended receiver, Stephen LaBeouf. Stephen LaBeouf's open right there. It's just lobbed over his head, stops the clock. Uh, obviously, you're just trying to keep the clock running here so they can get into the locker room. Uh, and then Prairie View wants the clock to run so they can get a locker room and try to uh, regroup a little bit. And, and try to do what they did last week. They know they're not out of it, but... The one thing they need to do is try to get a stop. Don't let Nichols, if you're a Prairie View, put too many points on the board early, and the Colonels just want to keep things warmed up and keep things flowing. They're, they're hitting on all cylinders right now as they get ready for that conference opener next week. This ball batted down, almost picked off. A little bit of a low throw that time by it, Fourcade, and it may have been Jalen Williams with his hands up on it. It was intended for... Uh, Jerisco again right there, and uh, like you said, getting his hands up, knocking that down right there. With, uh, defensive lineman uh, for Prairie View, nice job, and uh, it's going to force the Colonels into a punting situation right at midfield. Tyler St. Germain gets hit, and there comes the late flag is thrown. So the Colonels are going to get 15 out of this one. And I think there may have been hesitation as the referee thought about whether or not the person or the defender was blocked into Tyler St. Germain. Well, we're going to find out right now if it was personal foul or was it just running into. That's if, it, the, that's if it's running into, right. it's not enough for the first down. No, it isn't. 
automatic first down if it's a personal foul. Otherwise, if it was running into, they might decline it right here and take the punt, which is, I think, what we're going to see. There you go. All right, so it was running into. It wasn't enough to pick up the first down on the five-yard penalty. So the Colonels will take the result of the punt, and uh, that will put uh, Prairie View back at their uh, own 24-yard line. So uh, take the result of the punt and go out and play defense. Tell you what, that was a hair away from getting blocked, but you've got to have a uh, presence of mind to make sure that you don't run into the kicker. Uh, and, you know, that could have easily been a personal foul, but apparently he was slightly blocked into it, which resulted in the running into the kicker call. The last offensive series until the mix-up with the chains, uh, this Prairie View offense really got on track, and they don't start that way on first down as there's just not very much for Caleb Broach at running back. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. Taquan Fields steps up, haven't called his name tonight, steps right in there and makes a nice stick on the trap play ran by Prairie View. Bottom of the screen, McCray, the running back, is there, and there's a catch and a quick upend at the 30-yard line for a gain of six. Catch to Quentin Bell. That was number 44 on that stick. Uh, Alquani Martin coming up from his defensive back position, making a very nice play on the receiver. Biggest thing for the Panthers right now is to keep this drive alive, and they need four. Don't need it all. They need four. They get it on a far side completion, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered, and Quentin Bell comes through with his second catch. Big, tall receiver at 6'4", and look for Prairie View to use that height as we move along. Well, they just got to stay in rhythm. <laughs> Have you <laughs> noticed they're getting the chain set now? I mean, get in a rhythm and stay in it. Don't have something take you out of it like chains or uh, you got to worry about yourself at this point in time. McCullers, a pretty throw, but he overthrows. Oh, throws a well-colored man again, going for the height advantage of Quentin Bell. Well, Nichols in a two-deep secondary. They had the safety across the top, uh, playing cover two across the top of the go route by the receiver, and he had the trail corner underneath right on the hip. The pass was not a very good pass, uh, and it was uh, overthrown and uh, didn't give the receiver a chance to come down and make the play. On second down, Into Nichols' territory at the 45-yard line, Darius Floyd, wide receiver, running back, also kick returner. He's one of the young men that do it all. And I'm still waiting to see what's happened to Joshua Simmons because I was expecting to see his speed as a bigger part of this Prairie View offense, and it just hasn't been there. And this time the run gets nothing. Well, the other thing you haven't seen is you haven't seen right. You haven't seen McCullers running the ball either. But let me tell you, Ken. Here's the reason why: because the Nichols defense is forcing him to give the ball on the zone read. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is they're taking away the quarterback option of running the football. So what he's taught is is by reaction of the defensive end or the defensive lineman, I've got to hand the ball off because this is the read I'm giving. So credit the Nickel State defense for taking away one of the big weapons of the Panthers, their quarterback's running ability. Give the Broach again, and Broach on that inside handoff is down to the 46-yard line of the Colonels, and that's on fourth down, and he's not going to get the first down. It'll come up short. They didn't punt the ball away, thinking they could get it with the inside handoff and keeping it on the ground, and it didn't work. So the Colonels have the football, as this is the second time the Panthers have given it up on downs. Well, they have 2.36 on the clock, two timeout, plenty enough time for this Colonel offense to try to put some more points on the board. I'm really surprised at that point in time they went for it on fourth down. But you, you, you think about it. We haven't seen McCullers break one out tonight. 
and that's a credit to what Nichols is doing defensively to take away his greatest strength, which is running the ball off of the read options and the uh, the uh, run pass options. 4K, 13 of 20, 184 yards passing so far. He's going deep over the middle and has a man. And that is complete for the Colonels with Mason Roberts on Ma the reception. Mason Roberts runs that same seam route. Uh, 4K had hit that a couple times in the first half for big gains, comes right back to it, right in between the safeties uh, of the Prairie View Panthers for a big game. On first down, Colonels keep it on the ground. And Irvin takes it inside the 25-yard line to the edge of the red zone. As we near the two-minute mark in this first half. Pushing the tempo, getting the call from the boundary. Forcade with the play action, throws in a crowd. Two Colonel receivers there, including uh, Falcons, but the completion goes to Mason Roberts. Well, that's or about. Did he drop it? I, I think, I think he might have dropped it. I think he dropped it. Right. Incomplete. Right. He Incomplete. Back at the line of scrimmage. But, but, Ken, that's the fourth or fifth time the Colonels have gone to that quick screen out there with one blocker. And I tell you what, it's, it's against a cover four look or a cover two look sometimes you're getting from Prairie View. Those corners are playing really hard edge, and, and it's just not working. The wide receivers of Nichols aren't getting the blocks on those corners. At that time, it was way too crowded with the two receivers being. Uh, right up on each other. 4 k against an all-out blitz goes down. Prairie View brought that edge blitz right there that time, and the, uh, they didn't pick it up. I, I don't know if that's so much 4 k's fault from not changing his protection, knowing that the blitz was coming from that edge, or was, there, or was it the offensive line just didn't slide to the direction from where the blitz was coming, but there was a miscue someplace in a protection breakdown. Sometimes your quarterback is going to have to change his protection calls in order to make sure he gets either an extra man blocking in there to pick up the blitz, max protection, or... He's going to have to slide his offensive line to the side of where the blitz was coming from. Breakdown in protection right there. The sack of 4K. Seven-yard loss on the sack. Clock is stopped with 101 to play in the first half. Colonels cruising 31-0. And I think in the back of Tim Rebo's mind as he builds a program here at Nichols, and look, he's building a program here at Nichols because when he came in, three years ago, he had to change the environment and uh, just do something that hadn't been done in, in quite a while here, and that was just win a football game. Well, he had to change the environment, but he also had to change the recruiting philosophy. Well, he did, he did that. <laughs> and he, and look, he did that, and he, he did that, because ni right. 97 players on his roster are from Louisiana. And do you know, Ken, uh, almost all of them are from a 100-mile radius right here around Thibodeau, Louisiana. Well, the first thing he did in 2015 was end a 23-game losing streak. In 2016, he challenged for the conference title. And here in 2017, he's knocked off McNeese for the first time in eight years and has a 1-0 record in the Southland Conference. Here's the long field goal attempt. And once again, it is good by Fonseca, who proves that, wow, he just proves that there's no stopping him. That leg, he's got 50-yard range. Well, that was 49 yards. 49 he's definitely, yards. He's definitely and, got 50-yard range. And what the reason kick. I said 50, because he had another three to five yards on that right. kick. Right there, five plays, 22 yards, a, a minute 40 off the clock, results in a 49-yard field goal right there, and this is gaining experience for Fonseca. There's no doubt about it. 34 to nothing. Nichols with the lead over... Prairie View and the Panthers have 56 seconds to try to do something. Maybe get a few points on the board, drive it down the field, but Fonseca's kicks have been so deep there have been no returns except, well, it's been about two returns, and they've netted about uh, 25 yards per return. You know, Ken, going back to what we were talking about a second ago, Tim Rebold building a program down here in Thibodeau, uh, you look at how he changed the recruiting philosophy of the way he was going to do things from previous uh, uh previous staffs first thing he did is he was in every high school in the state of Louisiana and sometimes three or four times during that particular period because I know he was in mine at that time all of the time whether we had a player or didn't have a player just meeting coaches I've known Timmy Rebull for going on 30 years now and he's one of the most personable guys you want to know which adds to 
the recruiting of local talent within 100 miles right around Thibodeau. So he changed that philosophy completely. You look up and down that roster, it's loaded with people from Louisiana, not to mention 100 miles, as I've said, right here around the Thibodeau vicinity. And you've got players who perform well, players who turn down offers from FBS schools to play here at Nichols. There's a seam on the right side, and the Panthers have a nice return to the 45-yard line. Once again, Darius Floyd showing his expert ability as a kick returner. Well, how about that excellent ability of Fonseca making a tackle right there? Kickers <laughs> don't usually do right. that. He's coming off the field, and he's saying, me, linebacker, me, <laughs> right here, linebacker. <laughs> you know, and, and then Timmy Rebold just gives him the fooey look. You know, so, yeah, like, I mean, he comes up, but, but let's talk about the return. It was that double in, double out again uh, that I talked about, a sideline return where he bounces between the numbers and the boundary, hits that seam, and there was nobody there. Fonseca had to step up and make the play. Nice job on Fonseca, but nice job by Prairie View Special Teams on that double in, double out return on the sideline. Fonseca's 5'11", 185. You see him make a tackle like that against a speedy wide receiver, and that will smart a little bit, but he's tough enough to do it, and we see Mc colors start to use his feet there you go he got the right read right there that yes. time ken he got the read on the pull so he pulls the ball and what does he do he picks up four to five he keeps pounding that sooner or later he'll pop one but he's got to get the read nichols has not given him the read to do that this time he'll drop back in a big rush the ball just slipped out of his hand that just fluttered out it looks like me throwing a football today <laughs> well, <laughs> I throw it right into the ground. No, yeah, it just I, I, came out of his he hand. He saw the rush, and I think he wanted to get it out quick, and it just fluttered out the wrong way, and he lost it. Yeah, I, I, something happened there. It just floated out of his hands into the ground. Well, that's the kind of a first half it's been for Prairie View. And the one time they were able to get in sync and march down the field, again, we had the long holdup because they outplayed the chains, and, and uh, we had to wait for the chains to get set, which took them out of their rhythm just a little bit. And that's a catch by Quentin Bell. There's Joshua Simmons. That. Joshua Simmons that's on Joshua that route. That's Joshua Simmons. Right. And sorry, folks, sometimes we miss these. Uh, Pro Review's playing games with the numbers, and they've got yellow numbers on white jerseys and in the press box with no monitor. It's pretty hard to see. Well, yellow jerseys, excuse me, yellow numbers on white jerseys and two old guys with bad <laughs> eyes trying to see numbers right there. You know, so, yeah, it's kind of hard on those uh, Prairie View jerseys. I don't know if you viewers at home are kind of having the same the same problems with that, but uh, uh, you can cut Ken and I some slack. We are, our eyesight isn't as good as it used to be. <laughs> so Prairie View would like to do something with this football in the final 17 seconds to play and any points on the board would be good. Now, the Panthers have a strong-legged kicker with 60-yard range themselves in Zach Elder. And I'm not saying when you're behind 34 nothing that you want three, but you want something. So if you get down to the final few seconds and you're way out, you may settle for a Zach Elder's field goal just to give you some positive momentum going into the locker room at halftime. Snap was a little off the mark, and McCullers just throws the ball down. It's going to be intentional grounding. Yeah, he just uh, inside the uh, tackle box just takes it right to the feet of an offensive lineman, and uh, big number 77 right there was wondering. That's Marquise Griffin, a junior. Uh, well, his set, the, the, the stop. Oh, my goodness. We also got a face mask involved in there. So apparently they they. they he didn't call the grounding. They called a face mask against Nichols. Did he grab the face mask possibly of McCullers while he was coming in there, which caused him to throw the ball down to the ground and the incomplete pass? That could it possibly be. Don't know. But that's going to set up a nice first down deep into Nichols' territory for uh, Prairie View. Carbon Finlayson's snap was off to the right. Let's see what he can do on this series. In trouble there. Some of the feet, and he can't get loose, and the Colonels bring him down. The clock running with under 10 seconds, down to six seconds. Well, they had number 95 Take right the there. Timeout. Right, number 95 right there on that sack was uh, Devin Simino. 
coming in, but the initial pressure was applied by a safety blitz coming from uh, the secondary of uh, the safety, Amani Martin, trying to come right in there. He popped in there, uh, just didn't get the sack and got cleaned up by number 95, Devin Simino. Prairie View, A&M, 41 plays, 140 yards. Colonels, 40 plays, 304 yards of total offense. Well, yeah, they take a timeout right here. You know, it's a good decision to do that right now, and uh, they're going to bring the kicker out, and here we go. This should be a, what's that, a 30, looks like a 32-yard field goal. It'll be a 42-yard field goal for Zach Elder, and again, well, let's see. Are they using Zach Elder here? It's 42 yards. I said 32 yards, but it will be 42 yards. They may have. We get a number on that kicker and see what that yellow number. That's number well, 37. They, they, they changed him. Yeah, they that's Zach got Elder. Got a number change. So right. that is Zach Elder. And again, Zach very, Elder. very strong leg, Zach Elder. And uh, the longest to date is a 29-yard field goal uh, last week against Sam Houston State. So we'll find out if he's got the leg. Pre-game, he was kicking well. I think he uh, looked like he he has the leg, but uh, we'll see with the rush coming. Nichols takes a timeout to try to freeze the kicker. You know, I've done that before. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Just depends on whether your kicker has ice water in his veins or he gets nervous the more he thinks about it. And only the coach knows the kicker right. to know whether that or you've watched it on film and you see whether it bothers him or not. There's the boot by Elder. Plenty of leg. Plenty of it's leg. It's good. You so got it. Definitely does. 42-yard field goal right there. Definitely does have the leg and more. That would have been good from 52, and they tell me he – in practice, regularly hits from 60, so from 60. right at right at midfield. My goodness. So there you go. At least they get on the board. They have some positive momentum going into the locker room where hopefully they can settle themselves down, make some adjustments, and come out and play a, a much better second half. Pro Review, again, if they're not clicking on all cylinders, remember, did not play the first game their season opener, first game of the season, because that was canceled by Hurricane um, Harvey. Harvey. I have trouble with that name tonight for whatever reason. Well, we, we, Katrina flashbacks. Well, but a lot of hurricanes going on out there. and So so last week was their opener, and for your opener, how's that? You've got to go to the number three FCS team in the nation, Sam right. Houston State, right. champions of this conference. Um Got off to a slow start, as would be expected. Sam Houston did some things to confuse McCullers at quarterback, knowing that he would be new to the system, and it worked. And McCullers found his own in the second half and made a big rally. They'll kick it low and try to squib it. Colonels fall on it, and uh, with two seconds, should take a knee probably and head to the locker room with a comfortable 34-3 to lead. But I still like Pro Review getting points on the board well, just it, for something positive. Look, they were down they were down 24 to three to Sam Houston when they started the rally right before halftime. Right. So don't count this Pro Review A and M team out there. Explosive folks, don't go away at halftime. Wade and I are going to be here with you talking about this at halftime. And when this team comes out in the second half, look out. And I guarantee you that Tim Rebo will remind his colonels of that as the first half comes to an end with a 34-3 colonel lead being taken to the locker room by Tim Rebo and the Nichols colonels. So with that, we'll take a break and be back in just a little while with our halftime show. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser from John L. Guidry Stadium in Thibodeau, back right after this.
At halftime here at John L. Guidry Stadium in Thibodeau, Louisiana, Southland Conference football, Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, and the Nichols Colonels cruising right now over the Prairie View A&M Panthers by the score of 34-3. to And Wade Kaiser, in the pregame show, we said the play of the quarterbacks was going to be key. Chase Forcade has been Chase Forcade, but McCullers just, Lavelle McCullers, where has he been? Oh, he's not there. I mean, they've got to get him involved. I, th I think I, I, I talked about it in the first half from the standpoint of what they do offens offensively. A lot of things that they do is off of reading what the defense gives you. So everything has been basically a give to the running back brooch or one of their other running backs. They can't get him going because Nichols is doing such a great job taking away the quarterback option of running the football. With that being said, what he's got to do then is he's got to settle down and stop trying to press. He's trying to press into the throwing game, and he's, you know, ball's coming out of his hands wrong. He's throwing it at the feet of his receivers. He's pressing. He's got to sit there, and I'm sure their coaches are telling him right now that you've got to take what they're giving you. Mm -hmm. And if he does that, hopefully he'll come out and play a better second half. He's not going to rush tonight, apparently, for what he did against Sam Houston last week. Right. He's got to get his team back into this by being patient and taking what Nickel State gives them. And he's shown us that he has the arm. He can make the throws, but he's, as you said, got to give right. us that little bit extra to help Pro Review get back into this game. Right. From a Chase 4K standpoint, I think Chase has given us everything we expected to see. Maybe a little less of the throwing game, but that's because Nichols is in, uh, enjoying such a big lead. He's on fire, Ken. Yeah. He throws the interception in the first quarter early. He comes over, and I, I kind of glanced at him down on the boundary at that particular point, and I saw how irritated he was. And he goes back up there, and he's lighting things up. Again, he's being patient. He's taking what he's getting from the secondary in the throwing game from Prairie View, but what he is also getting is he's getting a great performance from his ground game, which is taking patience off or taking pressure off of him having to throw the ball. So we're getting a great effort tonight out of Chase Forcade, and I know in their locker room right now, Tim Rebol and uh, their offensive staff is telling them, continue taking what they give you. Don't press it too hard. And I want to take something you just said in sometimes Chase Forcade maybe missing his read because Tim Rebo told us that the only time he really sees Chase get frustrated is, is not when by trying to force the ball, but when he misses a read, he gets frustrated with himself. Right. But he's not letting that get him down tonight. Well, that's a mark of a competitor. Again, as I said in the pregame show, I've seen this young man grow up. I watched him on, on, the, on the Cleary Playgrounds in Metairie, Louisiana, through Rummel High School where I coached against him for four years, and I've watched him for two years here now at Nichols State. Knowing the young man and the competitive nature and the things that goes through his mind when he makes a mistake, he will press too hard, and that will put him into problems. And that's what Tim Rebo was saying, don't press take what they're giving you and he's done a good job after that interception early tonight and uncle john 4k i think will be proud where's he old miss tonight somewhere i bet but uh <laughs> i know he'll be proud wherever he's watching that uh his nephew is doing just that now knowing last week prairie view goes to sam houston state again as we've said so many times the number three fcs team of the country they fall behind 24 to 3 they make a great rally pull within seven points as they take the opening kickoff and go down and score with that fast-paced offense, but they kick off to Sam Houston, who returns it for a touchdown. And again, Prairie View has to play catch-up. Pulls within eight, one score, one possession, one score, and they can't do it. They lose by eight points in a close game, but they gave the number three FCS team of the nation right. all they could handle. Knowing that, what's going on in that Prairie View locker room right now at halftime? Well, f first thing <laughs> Coach Simmons is saying to these guys, he's saying, all right, that's over. Let's put that out of our minds, all right? Let's move on. Let's, the next effort is the most important effort, and the next effort is coming now in the third quarter. So we've got to come out, and we have got to stop Nichols, who deferred will be getting the ball at the second half. We've got to get a four down and out right off the bat, and we've got to put some points on the board. That's what he's saying now. Next effort is the most important effort. And you already told us what Tim Rebo is telling his colonels in the locker room, so I don't think any changes. I just think we're going to see uh, one team try to coast on this, not let Prairie View 
uh, do much more than maybe get a few points on the board and just try to right. take this into a very important conference opener next right. week. N Nichols is looking at who next week? Sam, Sam Houston, Houston State. State <laughs> who they've just watched on film all week against right. this same Prairie View team. But it's a big one because, remember, this Nichols team in the building of this program has not, had not beaten McNeese for eight years, and they did that in the season opener on August 31st. And guess what? They haven't beaten Sam Houston in a long time, and they're next week. Right, and they're on the road. So they want to make sure that they continue what they're doing well from the first half, bring it into the second half. He's telling them, the quarterback, to continue, chase 4K, don't press it, take what you're getting, make your reads correctly. Let's continue to play good defense, good special teams, and let's get out of this thing and finish off and get ready for a Sam Houston team next week. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll just go over some of the halftime stats with you. All of that with the Colonels leading here in Thibodeau at John L. Guidry Stadium on the campus of Nichols State. It's Nichols 34 and Prairie View 3.
Back at halftime as the Colonels have returned to the field. Pro Review should be making their entrance out of the halftime locker room very soon. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, and the Colonels cruising past Pro Review 34-3. to But the Panthers, and I know this might not sound like a lot if you're just tuning in late, got that, that, that late field goal by their field goal kicker, and that gave them a little bit of a lift, and they have the lift, as we talked about just a few moments ago, of knowing that they made a humongous rally from this kind of a deficit last week against Sam Houston State. And I'm sure their coaches, including head coach Willie Simmons, said we did it last week against the number three FCS team of the nation and the former champions uh, of this conference. So we can do it again against Nichols if we play our football game. But they've got to find a way, as we talked about, to free up Lavelle McCullers, who was only 7 of 18 passing for 94 yards. He had one good long shot of 37. He was sacked three times, and that says a lot. So somehow they've got to find a way to get McCullers. Look at the rushing game. The, the rushing game just, you know, not, almost not that 94 yards, and a lot of that came on one drive toward the end. Right, and and it's it's completely lopsided at this point. Like you said, and we said earlier, we got, they got to get Mc, Lavelle McCullers somehow back into this groove and stop pressing. You know, he, he, he's got some weapons around him. You know, uh, Caleb Broach is running hard tonight. Uh, Stephon McCray, uh, Dewana Tucker. These guys, uh, you know, he's got some weapons. He's pressing too hard with everything else. And if he just stops pressing, hopefully – uh, their offense can get back on track a little bit and uh, uh, get back into this game somehow. But you look at the other side. Look at look at the statistics for Nichols right now. You know, you, you, you see leading the way in their rushing is Kyron Irving, 12, uh, 12 attempts, 74 yards, only three for a loss. You know, two touchdowns already on the night. And Jeremy Rounds, uh, they they brought him in in the middle of the second quarter, uh, five rushes, 33. Uh, yards and uh, one touchdown. But look at Chase Forcade's numbers, 15 of 22 with that one interception, but he's thrown for 207 yards already in one TD. So, you know, he spread the ball around uh, to his receivers, um, Mason Roberts, Christian Booker, Jarrell Rogers, and Damian Jean-Pierre um, are all racking up yards on the passing game, and it's not necessarily completely downfield. They're doing a nice job spreading the ball around underneath the underneath zones and the underneath stretches, uh, but they have also taken a few shots and come away with some big uh, gains there. So uh, it, it's a complete statistical uh, mismatch. John 4K texted. He says, hey, man, I'm not at Ole Miss. I'm in the hospital. I had surgery on my gall, emergency oh surgery my. on his gallbladder. So, John, we're praying for you. Wishing uh, and, and hoping that you get a speedy recovery. But uh, watching Chase play tonight ought to help that recovery a little bit because, my goodness, uh, he is uh, playing in a way you would be so proud of him. Colonels uh, didn't have to return it, but they will. And uh, we'll have a little bit of a return coming out to the near side. Tuscany Figaro, a quarterback in his own right, fifth-year player. And... Um, the you know, backup to Chase, also an excellent runner, and, and he was a running type quarterback, and is a good return man. Right, this kind of figure was a great athlete, and I tell you what, uh, you know, Tim Rebo said, "Hey, tell you nothing wrong with his talent or what he can do with our offense." Is he was beaten out last year by Chase Forcade. but Tiscani Figaro is an outstanding athlete in his own right, and they getting him in the game by in putting him in in special team situations, and we just saw right there his athletic ability. First and 10 for Chase Forcade and company, and they'll just keep it on the ground with Kyron Irvin. Again, Irvin in for Dontrell Taylor, the sophomore starting running back who was injured at Texas A&M on his third carry last week. But Irvin has stepped in, done a great job. You also have not heard the name Mason Boudreaux if you're a Colonel fan. He was nicked up on his first carry last week at Texas A&M and did not return to that game and is not playing tonight. Irvin pushes through everybody and takes a few with him for the ride for the first down to the almost the 30-yard line. Doing a great job tonight is that Nickel State offensive line. They're a story in themselves, you know. Uh, Chandler Arsenault, Brian Hernandez on the right side. Uh, Arsenault last year was a first-team All-SEC SEC Southland Conference SLC player, and Hernandez was all 
uh, Southland Conference academic team. So you got a smart guy over there, got a strong guy over there. They do a great job on that right side. And then Ryan Hanley, the guy at center who took over midway through the season last year as the starting center uh, from Rummel High School in New Orleans, uh, coming in there and just uh, winning the job and doing such a great job bringing it into spring training and this year. Uh, has really stepped up, and then P.J. Burkhalter and Eddie Houston on the left side, Burkhalter being the left guard, uh, Houston uh, the left tackle, uh, have done an excellent job tonight controlling the line of scrimmage, and as I said back in the middle of the second quarter when Nichols started up with their fast tempo offense, you saw uh, many of the Prairie View defensive linemen standing there with their hands on the hips sucking air, so uh, uh, taking advantage of that is the offensive line just, just hammering it at them. Well, as we take a look at Stephen Guillory, he's being helped off the field, but putting a little weight, a little pressure, and being able to walk, so maybe we'll see him return a little bit later. Now for the Colonels, brings up another first down. And they'll keep it on the ground, Urban again, and you just keep giving it to the horse until someone can stop him. <laughs> well, you know, right there, um, not coming down the line of scrimmage right there to make uh, contact, and it, it was uh, Nichols with their zone read of their own. Uh, number 90, Willie Green, not coming down, making the tackle right there and uh, giving uh, Kyron Irvin a, a tremendous amount of running room to be able to squirt up the middle for a big game. And this is going to be the Kyron Irvin series as he'll get the call one more time. And Nichols with the big lead, I think right now, wants to make sure nobody gets hurt, eat a lot of clock, and let this go. With the, You want a well-rested team going into Sam Houston next week. Uh, and, again, it's not the conference opener because their conference opener was McNeese in the first game of the season. So well, you let know, make sure we, we get that correct. This is, is yeah. their second game. but conference opener for Sam Houston right there you know they're gonna they're still gonna stay within the things that they do and and 4k does this well but he'll right. get out of bounds smart play by Chase you know they, they, they just can't get too lackadaisical with this big lead but they're gonna stay within what they do they're still gonna run their offense they're gonna make sure they get the proper reps but you're exactly right they want to be able to get out of this without any injuries before they go into Sam Houston next week right there 4k had nowhere to go receivers were called covered credit the Prairie View secondary right there uh, in a too high zone doing a great job taking away all passing lanes for 4K to throw. He scrambles and runs out of bounds. Third down. 12 for the Colonels. High snap. 4K pulls it down. Makes the toss off the mark. Almost intercepted. Michael Leday had a shot at it, couldn't pull it down for a Prairie View, and the Colonels will have to pump this one away. You know, you know, again, what you just said, Wade, you look at the Colonels and you go, don't get lackadaisical here because this is a team that showed in the first half they can explode with their offense. Well, there's their stop right there. So let's, uh, oh, great punt. Return there, is on. Right. That was their stop, Ken. So, uh, wow. uh, so now, you know, taking the ball over the 20-yard line with a great punt right there. 62-yard punt. They were going to have to get something going. You're absolutely right. 62-yard punt. Great punt. Great hang time. Tyler Germain needed to flip the field, and he just did. Now you turn things over to your defense if you're the Colonels and see if Lavelle McCullers shows something different to start the second half than he did in the first. Well, they got their stop. Now they're going to have to get something going. They want to put some uh, points on the board. Chip away at that lead. Don't try to take it, you know, in all one shot. Use the, uh, the whole second half to chip away and improve our football team, uh, getting better at the things that we do. You're at the stage of the game, if you're Prairie Review right now, where you've got to worry about yourself and not so much your opponent. Get yourself better. McCray is the running back. And he'll get the call on first down. Doesn't fool the Colonel defensive line. They stuff it. 
Again, the Colonels on the zone read right there gave him a give read. So what does he do? He gives the ball as he's taught. That's the offense. Credit the defensive line of Nickel State stacking up that inside zone play right there for only a gain of two yards. Second down, eight. This time a quick throw by McCullers, and it's caught at the 30-yard line right by the first down marker by Joshua Simmons, who you've got to credit the Colonels. They have kept him out of the offense in the first half, and with his speed, he's a guy who can spread the defense. So to keep him in check is, is good defense by the Colonels. You know, a nice throw right there, nice catch. Uh, you know, little things like that are gonna are working on yourself, getting yourself better in your throwing game. It started with great protection up front from that offensive line. Great job, Prairie View offense. Just a long sustained drive or get a bunch of it, it doesn't matter. The Prairie View Panthers just need to get something going and they do move the chains, which is what they wanted to do on that run by McCray. Well, there you go. Kenny Dotson on the stop. Big first down right there. Ooh, getting the ball off quick, trying to push the tempo. But that's dangerous because they missed Darius Floyd and had uh, Amani Martin not fallen, he might have picked it off. Well, Ken, you're not going to believe this. They almost didn't have the chain set again. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking to a friend of mine who is an official, and he said, hey, "This guy got to get this chain gang to hustle. They got to hustle into place. Get these guys in shape." McCullers on the toss, good catch at the 41-yard line. One yard short of the first down. That is Hardy on the catch. Nice out route right there by McCarty. He breaks it down at 12, coming back to 10. The ball's right on the money. Great throw by McCullers right there. This is the way he's settling in the offense. Now it sets up third and short. These are the things you want to be able to see from your offense. Third, short, get the call. No hurry by this per review team. They don't have to speed it up right now. What they have to do is sustain what they have, drive down the field, get some points on the board, and feel good about themselves here. And there's the first down with a big run up the middle. A hole opened up and McCray saw it. And Stephon McCray at 220 pounds busted through it to move the chains for another first down. Again, inside zone right there. Good job by that uh, Panther offensive line. Few missed tackles by the linebackers of the Nickel State uh, Colonels there, but uh, they're sustaining a drive. They're working on themselves. They're getting themselves better. Uh, by going out and trying to make a statement on this first drive. Prairie View has not used their tight ends, and they've got some sure-handed tight ends. Jantre Epps, one of them, just checked into the game. He's 6'3". He's big after the play action. McCullough's in trouble. He goes down. And uh, the rush put on by Terrell Ankelad, and he had some help. Well, Terrell Ankelard right there comes off of his uh, left end position, does a nice bull rush over their uh, right tackle, uh, Damarian Ward, a sophomore, and uh, Ankelard just bull rushes him right back into the quarterback's lap. McCullers had no place to go. Second down, way behind the chains. Second and 16. McCullers will try to do it with his feet. Good cut inside. He breaks a tackle and is sliding to the ground very near the first down marker at the 40-yard line. They'll spot his knee down at the 41-yard line. That'll be just short of a first. So it'll be third down and one. Right there. there you, you saw some of his explosiveness right there. Now, that was not a zone read. That was a call quarterback keep all the way. Uh, but you can see how quick he is with his feet and – how athletic he is. Tucker, the running back, will get the call. He needs one for the first, and he gets it at the 40-yard line. Dewanye Tucker needed one yard, dove into the line, got it, and Prairie View's drive stays alive here on their opening possession of the third quarter. Nearing the eight-and-a-half-minute mark of the third quarter, Nichols cruising 34-3. We're just waiting for this Prairie View offense to show us some of the explosion characteristics they showed against Sam Houston last week. Back shoulder throw, and it was off the mark, incomplete. 
That's kind. Back shoulder. <laughs> it was back <laughs> off target. That was not a very good throw right there by McCullers. You, that, that's kind. I think, <laughs> but he, I think he was trying right. for a back shoulder well, throw. No, it was it, just it, way back. It was a 12 back to 10 out route, and he put it way behind the receiver, the intended receiver. It, it just was not on mark. Those are the things you don't want to see as an offensive coordinator. Those are steps backwards right there. And here's the thing. Quentin Bell's the intended receiver. He's 6'4". Just get it out in front of him. He's got the reach. He's got the wingspan to stretch it up and, and pull the ball down. So Tucker nowhere as the running back on second down. He'll lose a few yards, and that brings up third down behind the chains again. Third down and 12 for this pro review offense. Two plays ago, Nichols made a hockey line change. <laughs> they brought seven on, seven off. You know, it looked like a hockey uh, uh, line coming in during a game, and uh, I don't know if that's fresh legs in there or what, but uh, they're definitely uh, uh, shutting it down right now. Well, it wasn't the prettiest of passes, but it found the mark and a catch by Joshua Simmons, who's becoming more and a bigger part of this offense here in the second half. They was, haven't used his speed yet. They've used his hands, but not his speed. Simmons runs 16 yards, comes back to 14. We teach all wide receivers to come back to the ball. The ball was delivered on time by McCullers. It was a great route, great throw, great catch, and the result is a first down. Low snap picked up well, handed off, and pile up because just there's not much room for McCray to run. So McCray doesn't get much on it. Back to the line of scrimmage, second down, 10. Again, this line change right here by Nickel States is just shutting down that run right now. Brought in fresh legs uh, a few plays back and aren't able to run the ball uh, anywhere on the inside zone game uh, against them. What's Timmy Rebo showing right now on the Nichols defense that might get Sam Houston to thinking differently for next week? Well, they're going to have to know how to be to be able to attack an eight-man front because that's what Nichols is putting in the box, playing a, uh, sometimes a one-high secondary, and when they're going seven in the box, you're seeing a two-high secondary. So, you know, uh, it's kind of a base defense. What I'm seeing out there also is uh, a little twisting up front and a little stunning and slanting by the defensive line of Nichols State. So they're playing a few games. But moreover than that, they're changing out their defensive line about every three to four plays, getting a fresh group of uh, defensive linemen in there to either rush the passer or play that uh, zone read game of Prairie View. That little flip to Darius. Now oh, that was referee Eddie Kelly and uh, – that little flip to Darius Floyd or, uh, didn't fool anybody on the jet. They lost yards on that. The Nichols defensive line has been, as you say, pretty perceptive. They haven't been fooled by very much here. And uh, once again, the Panthers are behind the chains on third down and 13. McCullers just flips it out. Little high, bobbled, incomplete. And making sure it was incomplete was a hard hit by Laron James, the linebacker. Well, and the ball needed to be caught. Cameron Smith, no better place to put the ball than in your hands. I mean, <laughs> you, you, if it hits you in the hands, you got to catch the ball. You, you, you've got to. You're, you're down right now. You're trying to make things happen. Ball is, you know, a little high maybe, but he's got to. He, he, he reaches out there. He makes his make, makes the stretch. Hits him in his hands. He's got to come down with that ball to help his football team right now. And Smith is one of those tight ends, I said, wasn't being used very much. He had a catch earlier in the first half when they had the up-tempo going. And sure enough, at 6-2, he dropped that one. So, again, to get some points on the board and something positive out of this, they'll send in Zach Elder. Elder had no problem earlier kicking a 42 yard field goal and this one is going to be just over the crossbar and it falls in good it was right there uh just made it over the goal post it was great snap great hold and uh doesn't look like he got a hold of it uh, uh all completely but it's 46 yards 46 and it was yards good. yeah and uh puts another three points on the board so Nice drive. They come away with points. These are the things that they've got to chip away. And as I said, 
you can't so much worry about getting it all back fast. You got to take the things that you're getting, come away with points, work on yourself, and get positive things happening for your offense. 16 plays, 51 yards, 613 off the clock for a 46 yard field goal. That's positive for them right now. So let's see what the Colonels offense does after this kickoff. Will they continue to be conservative and just run some clock? Again, I'm always thinking of the well, next week. I'm thinking right. of keeping well, people healthy. You want, you want to be right. operating and clicking on all cylinders, but you want to stay healthy. You want to stay rested, especially when you're going to play uh, the number. Well, you're going to see some uh, some players on the, the country. right. You're going to see some players on the field that haven't been there yet, but they've got to stay within realms of what they do well and stay with their game plan and continue to do the things that they're supposed to do right. Toscani Figaro breaks a few tackles and a good second effort past the 25-yard line. I think you'll see a few more numbers, like I said, Ken, that we didn't see in the first half for the Colonels, uh, but. <laughs> From that standpoint, you know, they've, they've, they've still got to be able to execute. Yeah. yeah they've got to execute. So I'm sure that's the plan. And uh, Chase Forcade leads his offense out there on the field. And, and above all, he understands what he's got to do from his quarterbacking position, and that's execute the offense. Forcade keeping it on the ground, hands off. And Kieran Irvin on the carry up to the 35. Or they'll move it back to the 34. Gain of five. They've had a lot of yardage on that play tonight. A little draw inside to Kieran Irvin, hitting it up inside in those A gaps on both sides of the center, reading the blocks of those guards and centers right there. LaBeouf moves over to the right side, but the pass goes. The way out, I believe, to David Mosley on the far side. And check that. That's DeGene Dixon, the freshman. They've been trying to get him into this offense a little bit. And they've missed on a couple of pitch and catches between he and Forcade. Hit him that time. DeGene Dixon at a car high school in New Orleans, Ken. What a good football program that is. He's played in a few big-time games in the Superdome at Edna Carr. State champions last year. So Urban again, just straight ahead. Karen, Karen Urban is just being a workhorse right now. Same inside little draw play, that delay play that they've been running all night, and he's picking up good yardage. But credit that Nickel State offensive line again, like I said uh, a few minutes back. These guys are just knocking Prairie View off the ball. Forcade, straight hand off to Urban, straight ahead. Urban chugging forward for the first down. He'll move the chains, and uh, Nichols continues to eat clock. Well, eating clock, uh, tell you what, Kyron Ir Korean Urban is just, just, you know, running with authority, getting a nice pad level down, hard to bring down, uh, tailor-made for a uh, good offensive lineman to have guys like that run behind you. Somebody jumped before the play. Free play. 4K just unloads it real quick. Did a flag? Did a flag go down? Yes, there is. Yeah, there is. We're going to probably see offsides here. Might see interference down at the other end of the play. Also, they had a lot of jostling going on down there between the uh, Prairie View corner and the. And the uh, Nickel State receiver, and it was. It was uh, defensive interference, which will move 15 yards and automatic first down. Wow, and, and John just threw that up real quick on the free play, and it was underthrown. And well, when things are going good and things are working, <laughs> you get results like that sometimes. Yeah, th that's what I'm saying. There was no need for that right. pass interference play. Right. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's two kids out there trying to make a play, one – it went for one group, and it went against one player out there. And when things are happening good, those things take place. 
First and 10, Jar Jeremy Rounds with the football. Tries the middle, nothing. Jeremy Rounds had no place to go, running right into the middle of that Prairie View defense right there who stepped up and did a nice job. Uh, Devon Reed, Willie Green, two big defensive linemen for uh, the Panthers stepping right in there, getting off blocks and, and stuffing that down real quick. I was about to say Urban probably needed a breather, but it was for one play. He's back in. <laughs> so it might have been just uh, an equipment adjustment. Second down, 11. That's LaBeouf, the tight end, moving around. Loves to get his hands on the football. Toss to the right side. And uh, nice catch down there by Dixon. So there again is the young freshman from Edna Carr High School, New Orleans, Dijeen Dixon. Quick route. Catch the ball. Get rid of it real quick. Uh, in some terminology, it's called the 90 game or the quick throwing game. 4K catches the ball, executes the pass real well. Great catch by Dixon. Uh, missed tackle out there, picked up extra land yap yards on the play for a first down. Well, somehow a football floundered out on the field, so Chase jogged 15 yards back, picked it up, and threw it back toward the Prairie View sideline. Now he's back at the line and ready to go. Here comes the rush. Borcade will just heave one. He's got a man wide open in the end zone. That's a touchdown, and that is Dixon. Uh, they've been trying to get Dixon in the offense, like we said, and the true freshman is going to be feeling pretty good about himself with that touchdown catch from Chase Forcade. I'll tell you what, you're going to see <laughs> Forcade stands there. If you can see it on our uh, replay oh, they were here. coming. They were coming off the edge. He stands right in against it. Throws the ball out there where Dixon can run under it. There was no safety help across the top. And the result is another touchdown. Great job by Dixon. Great job by Forcade standing in there versus the pressure off the edge. Extra point is up and good by Fonseca. And with three minutes and ten seconds to play in the third quarter, it's 41 to six, Nichols. Seven plays, 73 yards, two minutes, 52 seconds to score to put it up to 40 to six, uh, 41 to six for uh, uh, Nichols. And I tell you what, Forcade uh, just put that ball out there in the money and allowed Dixon to run right under it. But what was not good for Prairie View, they're in a too high secondary, Ken. The safety to that side should have been across the top of that. He was nowhere to be found. I don't know if he got a misread, blew a coverage, which is what I think happened. There was no safety across the top. The corner underneath, the trailing receiver, which was Dixon, was expecting to have some coverage help from a safety, and it never arrived, and uh, touchdown, Colonels. We'll take a 30-second break, and when we come back, it'll be the Colonels kicking off to Prairie View. All right, Colonel scoring on the pass, touchdown pass to Dixon, Dijeen Dixon, the true freshman from Edna Carr High School, and the Colonels lead it. And uh, we'll kick off deep. No return by Prairie View, 41 to 6. Nichols with the lead, and we are nearing the three minute mark in the third quarter. I think it's important for Prairie View as they start their conference play in the Southwestern Athletics Conference, the SWAC, next week against Alabama State just to try to get something going and, and, and get some points on the board, get their offense rolling because last week they were able to make the comeback against Sam Houston, but tonight there's really been no sign of that comeback, no sign of, of the explosiveness that – I think everyone was expecting to see from this Panther offense. Well, you got to credit a lot of that to that Nickel State defense yeah. and the game plan. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. They took away the running option of uh, McCullers on the zone read, and McCullers just hasn't uh, come back from uh, making good decisions. 
I don't know if he. Uh, well, being chased, yeah, he throws it. Darius Lloyd makes the catch, but out of bounds. I, I, I don't know if he just was trying to press too much or what the case may be. But uh, Nichols has done a great job tonight taking away the running of uh, Lavelle uh, McCullers. McCullers, yeah. yeah. I mean, just they, they've done a great job. Their game plan come in was to make sure that this guy does not run the football, and he really hasn't. And I guess I was expecting if this happened, we'd see more of McCullers, maybe some called runs for him to use his feet. And, again, maybe you're saving him for – no, Alabama State next week, but I don't no, think so. Off not. the mark and almost picked off. Very close to going right into the hands of a Nichols defender. Right. Well, no, they're not saving them. It's just I, it, it, they're, the nature of their offense is to take what you're supposed to be getting and, and not to press. Well, he's been pressing in the throwing game, and you could see it right there. And, and he's kind of frustrated because he hadn't been able to run the football because Nichols has been taking it away. I don't mean saving him from that standpoint, but trying to keep him fresh. And, and you're not, as time runs out in this game, it becomes harder and harder for any type of a comeback. Right. So well, you, 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 you want right. everybody to go into that game as fresh and, as possible, and, but you do want some type of a drive going as Tucker, the running back, takes it for some positive yardage up the middle of the 30. Right. And, and I've, you know, I, I, I think I, I said it the right way, you know, they're mm -hmm. battling the clock, and they're battling the guys in red. Okay, yes. so look, you, you can only work on one thing at a time, and, and it, it, you've got to work on yourself. You know, let's go back to do the things that we do well. Let's go back to being patient on our offense, and let's chip away and do the things that will help us get better that will lead us into next week. That should be their attitude. Dullery back to receive a beauty of a punt from Houlihan. And he makes the fair catch at the 28-yard line of the Colonels, who will have the football for the final 2:09 of the third quarter. Tell you what, that was a beautiful punt. <laughs> Houlihan is all or none, isn't he? <laughs> he's, yeah. he's either going to bang that thing or it's going to be shanked off and it's going to be a 12, 15, 20-yard punt. But when he gets a hold of it, boy, I tell you what, just like he did that one, it's a beautiful punt and uh, forced uh, Delory to do nothing but fair catch it. Special teams can be a real weapon for Prairie View as they start their conference play next week. And here we go. Tuscany Figaro on the run. And look at Figaro showing that he used to be a running quarterback and was a good one there. He can do more than just return kicks. And this fifth-year senior getting it done for the Colonels. How is that for Figaro putting some nifty moves on some Prairie View defenders? Well, it's great to see this Connie Figaro to get some reps because I tell you what, he, he could be a starter in a bunch of programs in a few places around this country because he is, he's a fine athletic quarterback and he can make you miss in a, in a, phone, book, a phone booth. He's that quick. Good to seeing him get an opportunity to quarterback this offense as he takes the snap, and Chase 4K takes a breather here with the Colonels cruising 41-6. to Well, they're, they're staying within the boundaries of what they do. If you notice, they're still in their no-huddle, uh, up-tempo. And that was Jeremy Rounds. Right, and doing their check with me at the sidelines, making sure that they're working on themselves to get better because – of what they're going to be facing next week with Sam Houston State. So, you know, it's, it's, it's boiled down to this stage of the game that each team has got to be able to stay within what they do and make sure that they improve somehow, some way. Went to Lafayette High School, originally from San Diego. Scotty Figaro. Interesting, interesting players. Colonels keep it on the ground. They want to eat clock, run clock. Just keep the chains moving forward, and they are. Figaro, in 2014, rushed for 1,103 yards running this Nichols offense. In 2015, he started nine games, broke a collarbone. Right. And then Chase Forcade came on the scene. He's backing him up, along with Devin Powell at one time. The transfer from Tulane as the Colonels just go straight ahead. Nothing fancy. Nichols just trying to run some football here, and you're going to see Jeremy Rounds take a lot of handoffs and go forward as you got to figure Chase Forcade and uh, Kyron Irvin are probably finished 
for the evening. I mean, let me say this, too, uh, as we're moving into the fourth quarter. We were talking earlier about how Tim that, Rebo. That has is the end of the third quarter, by the way, right. with the Colonels leading 41-6, to six, you were saying. As, as, as Tim Rebo, we, we talked about how he's came in here and changed the attitude and the way he's recruited and, and done a lot of things for the program. One of the things he has done hard also is he has found those players that, um, how should I say this, uh, getting second chances where they've left other colleges and they've transferred in. You know, you, you mentioned Devin Powell. You, 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 you mentioned uh, 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 Tuscany Figaro. You've, you've mentioned a few other guys tonight for the Colonels that were guys that have come in and uh, uh, been given a second chance because they left another program. And he's done a nice job finding those guys too, bringing them in with the recruits that he's getting from uh, Louisiana. With that, we'll take a brief break. About a 30-second, 30 35-second break, and be back in just a moment with the start of the fourth quarter. All right. Start the fourth quarter of play. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, and the Colonels of Nickel State leading 41-6 to over Prairie View A&M. Colonels been keeping it on the ground. Chase Forcade starting quarterback. Kyron Irvin starting running back. They are on the bench. They're just taking it easy. And Tuscany Figaro, who we were talking about at the end of the third quarter, a fifth-year senior getting a chance to quarterback this team. He is the backup to Chase. He's a good runner and also is the kick returner and has some pretty nifty moves as we've seen him doing a few kick returns. He's going to toss one long, and here's an underthrown ball that the receiver, he came back for it and made the catch. Tell you what, Scotty Figaro stood in against the wow. blitz from Prairie View and threw it up in the air. Great catch out there by Bison Simmons. Bison Simmons comes down with the ball on a go route, fade route, and uh, but Toscani Figaro stands in there against the blitz and delivers the ball. Nice play. Underthrown. Simmons had to come back for it. And now the Colonels threaten near the goal line. Here's an easy run right into the end zone by Rounds. Jeremy Rounds for the touchdown. Nichols. Flag on the play. Hold on. This one might be coming back. I think it is coming back. I think we've got a holding penalty, it looks like. Didn't get the number from our official, Mr. Kelly. But they are taking it back. So that'll be 10 yards from the spot of the holding penalty. You know, I, I can't wait to see how uh, Tim Rebo is also going to handle some of the new recruiting rules that have come out this year from the NCAA. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Toscani Figaro with Joshua Rounds, Jeremy Rounds, brother, taking the handoff and just looking for a room. Can't find it. Rugby style scrum tackle. Talk about some of those rules well, well that we're the, looking at. You know, we're talking about recruiting and we're talking about Tim Rebo and how he does such a bang up job. The NCAA, you know, for the for the most part looked and listened to what a lot of the, the Division One coaches had talked about was having two uh, signing periods and an early and a late. And I'll I'll explain here in a second, Ken. On second down for the Colonels. Long count, they're using a lot of the clock. And they'll go with the corner turn, bump in the end zone, flag finally thrown, and that'll be pass interference. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely think we've got a, lot, a little pass interference call over there uh, against number 
nine right there. Uh, Kenneth Jordan with a shove uh, as the ball was was arriving, which is going to get a pass interference call anytime you look at it. But you're talking back, going back to the recruiting part of things. Well, here's our call from Mr. Kelly. Uh, there's going to be two signing periods. There's going to be the normal standard signing period uh, in February, and then there's going to be an early signing period between uh, November and December. And it's going to be interesting to see how Timmy Rebol handles that and goes out and gets early commits during that particular time. Whistle blows at the snap of the ball. Flag is thrown again. I got a false start right there, kind of marching backwards. But, th you know, th that's going to be a challenge to all of these coaches uh, at, at uh, the Division I level to see how they're going to handle the, the new recruiting period. Um, knowing Tim Rebol and the way he does such a bang-up job, I think he looks at that as a positive going out there and getting that early commitment from players and getting them signed early. So that way <laughs> there's not much drama left when it comes to that February signing date. After this play, I'd like you to discuss how some of the high school athletes are going to handle it because, man, I've, I've heard a lot of different scenarios that's going to bring uh, – it's going to make it <laughs> – Kind of exciting. Look at Figaro on his own. Breaking tackles. One, two, and finally the third one gets him before he can get into the end zone. But that's vintage Toscani Figaro using his feet, and that was on third down. Right, right there. He They, they run a quarterback iso. Uh, fake the running back, run in the sweep. They wrap the guard around the center, bring him up through the A-gap on the left-hand side. Big hole for Figaro, brings it down inside the five-yard line. But due to the penalties, it's going to bring up a fourth and uh, goal from the three-yard line there and elect, elect to kick the three. He's got ones of 47, 49, and 22. And, uh, boy, big rush that time. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't, know, I don't know how that didn't get blocked. Uh, with the rush it had. That was big number. It looked like 95, Devon Reed coming uh, scot-free right up the center, which brings up another one of those NCAA rules, which I can also t touch on here in a second. But he came right up the center unblocked. I don't know how he didn't get a hold of that. You know, you're talking, you're talking about the rush on the kicking game. We saw last year teams uh, hurtling, getting a running start and hurtling over um, the center and the guard to be able to jump into the backfield to block field goals and PATs. Well, the NCAA came out with a rule uh, against that this year where there is no running start uh, and, and leaping over offensive linemen is a safety concern uh, to be able to do that. But that wasn't the case right there. Uh, Big Devon just came through. It looked like the uh, guard center gap or the A gap. Nobody touched him, and, he, and I don't know how he didn't block that. <laughs> but it got up, and Fonseca four for four on field goals of 47, 49, 22, and 21. A weapon. Right. Well, you're talking about going back to that recruiting question you were asking me, Ken. I, I tell you who's going to love it. High school coaches are going to love it because there's going to be no more drama waiting around. You know what I'm saying? It, it, they're going to get kids signed and done maybe earlier than waiting around going through all of the shell game that a lot of these recruits play today where they're uh, rubbing uh, uh, shells around on who they're going to decide to choose to um, sign with on signing day. Tucker running one back, and that's one of the few that didn't reach the end zone by Fonseca, but he may have to ice his leg and his foot after this because he's kicked <laughs> off so much. Uh, he's probably five or, or eight yards shorter than he would usually be, and uh, my goodness, what a great night this young man has had as the kicker for Nichols State, or Nichols. Yeah, the, uh, they're going to call you down there to, <laughs> to put on the square toe and to, to kick straight on. But, yeah, he's had a great night, and he's such a great weapon and a great pickup for the Colonels that uh, – uh, going forward in the rest of league play, uh, in conference play, he's he's gonna could end up being a deciding factor again, like he was two weeks ago with uh, McNeese. They've got a player down on the field. I can't quite tell who it is from Prairie View. Well, we could if they had numbers you could actually right. read. But oh, well, what's what's purple tough. and gold? Very pretty colors, but when the gold number is on a white jersey and uh, you're far away from the action. It's sometimes a little hard to read. 
you know, getting back to the recruiting thing again, too, you ask how the kids are going to enjoy it. I think the kids are going to enjoy it for the most part. I think it will take a lot of the drama out of, of and the decision-making that is agonizing over the Christmas holidays going into the month of January to uh, uh, be able to um, come up with a decision. And that was, by the way, John Trey Epps. Happy to see him walking off on his own and okay because that is one of their big starting tight ends. Right. Haven't used him tonight. He's a great blocking tight end, catches everything thrown his way. You don't want to see that young man be injured before uh, the Panthers start SWAC play next week at Alabama State. Well, they're going to need him yeah. on the line because the SWAC is such a great conference and you need all your weapons lining up against uh, the Alabama States and uh, Gramblings and Southerns that you're going to see on your schedule. After this play, let's get back to the thought you just had. New quarterback. And the toss complete. So this is Jalen Martin, a redshirt junior. Last year played nine games, started four of them, passed for 945 yards, eight TDs, rushed for 200 more in six TDs, good feet, good arm. Good size. All three quarterbacks are 6'2 or above. This young man is 6'3, and he'll keep it on the run. Jalen Martin. Nico Hollins, we haven't seen yet. He's the red shirt freshman. Got in a little bit last week, I believe, in the Sam Houston game. See right there, Ken, is an example of a misread on a uh, zone read option. Mm -hmm. Ken, that should have been a give. Right there should have been a give. He, he misses the read. He pulls the ball, and right there sitting right in his face there are uh, two red jerseys waiting for him. Again, Nichols forcing by game plan the quarterback to give the ball on the zone read. Darius Floyd stopped. Joel Dullery on the stop for the Colonels. You know, back to the recruiting thing, uh, you know, I, I think it's something good. I would have loved to have that early signing date when I was coaching. Um, you know, I, you know, Ken, I'm not, I'm not much for all the fanfare. And the sooner you get it done, the sooner you get it out of the way, it's better for everybody. And um, But I think it's going to be interesting to see how college coaches handle it. That was complete to Drake Carter. So we haven't seen him. He's off the bench. And right now, Willie Simmons is let some guy, letting some guys come in and, and play and maybe get something done that the starters weren't able to do in this game. Incomplete. Well, that, and they're getting some valuable experience running what they do out of their playbook, their standard offense. They're in up-tempo. They're getting their they're getting calls in and out from the boundary. And uh, they're allowing Jalen Morton to run the offense at tempo, which is, I'm sure, one of the speeds that they use it's in their playbook. Martin with the toss to Bro, Broach. Broach with a little room down the sideline. Right there, nobody set the edge for Nickel State. The corner for Nickel State did not come up and set the edge on the toss sweep. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, Broach is running around in the secondary, and Dullery has to knock him out of bounds uh, coming from his backside safety position to save a touchdown. Somebody's not going to enjoy film study tomorrow when they look at that film because how many times have you and I heard Tim Rebo say we've got to set the edge you got to set the edge <laughs> I mean Tim Re Tim Re Tim Rebo Tim Rebo by um, how should I say uh, 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 profession of coaching is a secondary coach he's a defensive minded coach who uh, has always coached safeties or coached corners or the whole secondary together and uh, he understands where the force needs to come from out of the secondary, where the edge needs to be set. And if you don't have that, you're going to have the result of what Mr. Broach did right there, running down the boundary and your backside safety coming over, making a uh, touchdown-saving tackle. So, yes, that, that, that's going to be harped on. You, you know, uh, well, you know uh, without something happening within the next 10 minutes and 33 seconds, you know, uh, coasting uh, by over 30 points, that's nice, but in that film room, it's about teaching how to get better, and that's what Tim Rebo will do tomorrow on that play. Prairie View with a first down right at the Nichols red zone. There's the almost picked off, making a sweet move on the 
football for the Colonels was Javon Lewis or Jonathan Lewis. Tell you what, he, he catches that. He's, he's gone. gone. Yeah. He, he's gone. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody would have caught him. Uh, and, uh, From Santa Monica High School. Right, and I tell you what, he, he's gonna, tonight he's going to put his head down on the pillow and guess what he's going to be seeing? Ball, grass, <laughs> ball not in my hands. <laughs> he'll be he'll be well, going ball, that over again. Ball Manning Astro turf. Right, correct. <laughs> so, boy, he wish he could have that one back again. Well, we haven't had a chance to tell people that the Mannings put in this new turf. This will be a flag thrown procedure. Well, it's a beautiful turf. The Manning Field right here, the site of the uh, Manning Passing Academy, which is all around. Uh, uh, I, I, can't, I can't even give you the number of kids that they come to, come down here. They get quarterbacks from all over the nation, from colleges to come out, down and work with kids, and it has grown over the years to something that is tremendous. It's well known around the country, and uh, Manning helps uh, um, Archie Manning, and of course his sons help uh, finance some things with Nickel State to be able to put uh, the field in the stadium. McCray on the carry. And you've got the three Colonel practice fields and, of course, everything that happens inside this stadium. Right. And then to the right, to the south, uh, or just off the south end zone, you've got about 50 practice fields, 50 shorter 60 to 80 yard practice fields that are used for that Manning Passing Academy. A keeper by Jalen Martin around the right side, and he is very close to a first down. He's got it. And move the chains, first down per review. The Colonels are rotating a lot of guys in and out right now, trying to get some experience and some reps for these guys. This is important. It's about getting reps because you never know when you're one play away that you're the guy that now is the starter. Um, and yep. it's it's also the same way for Prairie View. These guys, they've, they've been rotating different receivers and uh, running backs and, of course, the new quarterback getting game reps, game speed reps. Toss into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Tell you what, officials letting them play down there. I saw a nice little push off by the receiver down right about on top of the end in the uh, uh, in the end zone, and uh, no flag was being thrown at that point. I like I like the pass concept set up that uh, Jalen Morton used right there with the offense. It was a nice little pump fake to a bubble route, and then going to the corner route uh, into the back of the end zone, and uh, it was incomplete. Second and ten at the twelve yard line. And pass inside. And this is a carry inside to the six. All right, we've got third down. Panthers can score, or can make a first down without scoring. But that time, nowhere to go for McCray, who's hit, pushed back, maybe gets a yard on forward progress. Let's see if they mark it inside the five. I think they will at the four-yard line. They can get a first down if they decide to go for this at the two, right around the two-yard line. 97 right there. Uh, Kenny Dotson made a nice play, and then he's coming off the field because his shoe came off, and uh, he had trouble picking his shoe up trying to come off the field. It was it was almost comical. Hopefully they get that on film, and they'll be kidding and ribbing him in the film room tomorrow about that. Jalen Martin, backup quarterback, along with McCray, the running back, and timeout called Prairie View. They're going to talk about this, and I think it's important for the Panthers to be able to punch this one in no doubt. to the end zone for themselves. But with the momentum they need going to Alabama State next week, they need this. Well, absolutely. They, they've got to punch this in. Uh, it's also big for Jalen Morton getting these big big reps in, in, in the speed of the game right here. So, uh it will do a lot for his uh, his mentality as being the backup quarterback, but it will also do a lot for the whole um, offensive part of things as they move into a long bus ride home, you know, after the ball game. All the way tonight. back to Pro Review, Texas. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think they jetted in here. They're gonna they're gonna bus and they bust in. Eight oh nine to play in this one. Colonels have it comfortably. Put away at 44-6, to six, but it's important right now for the Panthers of Prairie View A&M just to explode with that offense. Get their offense moving. 
Let us see a little bit of the explosive offense. Build, well, their, build their confidence and momentum for next week with the start of SWAC play at Alabama State. Well, well, think about this. They're looking at fourth and three for the first down, fourth and four for a touchdown. You know, basically right now, uh, Coach Simmons is looking to see how his offense is going to react in this situation on this play. This is going to say a lot going forward the rest of the year. And off to McCray. McCray stuffed at the four, and that won't be enough for the first down. So the Panthers will turn it over on downs. And, again, right. if Willie Simmons needed an answer, he got it, and he sees where he's got to do some work before Alabama State next week. Right there making a great stop. Back up linebacker Maroney Pointer, 6'1", 220 sophomore out of Tara High School in Baton Rouge, was right there to make a great play. And, boy, was he excited coming off the field. <laughs> that was one of those, uh, Mom, make sure that you get a clip of that because I want to keep <laughs> it uh, so I can show my kids. And put it on Facebook. Right. About once every 15 minutes. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I don't know if he Facebooks. He probably, uh, what is it, Twitter? Scotty Figaro picks up the low snap somehow, saves it, and is, is able to hand it off and to Darnell Adair, the sophomore from Thibodeau High School. <coughs> Look, these coaches are going so far past the two deep that we're down to about three deep and four deep, everybody getting a chance to play in this game. Adair around the left end. Pushed out of bounds. Donnell Adair has a little giddy up. Six foot, 190 pound red shirt freshman from right here in Thibodeau. I tell you what, he got to the edge right there, got his shoulder squared around, and uh, just came up shy of the first down stick. But you can tell he's got a little giddy up uh, in his stride. I'm sure coach is going to tell him in something like this. Don't get out of bounds. We want to run clock. <laughs> right. Well, let me tell you what he's thinking. He's thinking, I want to get into the end zone. I don't know what I got to do, but I'm going to keep doing it. There's Gotti Figaro on the keeper. You know, these guys right now are getting to show with their wares. You know what I'm saying? They're getting, to, they're getting to impress somebody. They're getting to show their wares from the standpoint of what they can do. And uh, uh, they're not thinking about clock and all that. They're thinking about getting vertical, getting down the field, picking up yards, and uh, uh, showing what they got. What's impressive to see is a backup quarterback like Toscani Figaro there if you ever need him. And uh, the fact that you can use him as a running back, as a kick returner, and, uh, boy, does that open up something because he throws the ball really well on the uh, halfback option. And right. there's the penalty flags all over the field. Nichols walking backwards, procedure. Somebody moved. Well, he's a weapon, and, and don't be surprised if you see uh, the offensive staff take him and use him somehow in, uh, in, in the offense in some sort of uh, uh, decoy, trick play uh, type of package. And off, keeping it on the ground. Look at the hole up the middle. Wow. Tell you what, a almost. There with a nice right. move up the hole. Almost, uh, almost broke it. Right, almost broke it right up the middle. 29, Raleigh Johnson brings him down by his neck, and which brings up a, one of the, and I, I'm, ta I'm talking about NCAA rules now, uh, the new horse collar rule for the NCAA. Now, if you grab the back of the jersey up around the neck, it is now considered a horse collar. Uh, the back of the jersey just around the name. Mm -hmm. And if the head is whipped back in the official's uh, opinion, it's going to be considered a horse collar penalty now again all going towards safety just watching the tackle right there up around the neck tackling high uh, brings that to mind and the colonels will just pound the line and let the clock run as we get under five and a half minutes to play in this game Nichols cruising 44 to 6 will up their record to 2 and 1 on the season Again, Prairie View did not play the opening week because of the hurricane in Texas. Lost a heartbreaker for them after a great comeback at Sam Houston State last week. Drops their second game and now must regroup, get the offense firing on the cylinders. They think 
they can, or at the level of, to which they think they can operate. And Figaro on the keeper. Look at Figaro. He's got room. He's got speed. Watch him turn it on. Breaks the tackle. Still being chased. Figaro to the end zone. Touchdown. Wow. What Toscani Figaro showing his ability to run the football, which is why he wrote, rushed for over a 1,000 yards. Flag is down, though. This one might be coming back. There's a flag at the 31-yard line. Tell you what, if, if, if we can see the uh, replay here, you're going to see him. It, it's quarterback ISO. Watch the backside guard wrap around in the hole. You're going to get a holding penalty or a block in the back right there. But I tell you what, look at him run away. Look at him run away right there. And uh, what a great talent he is. And, and, and I, will, I, I will go out on a line. You're going to see him used more somewhere in the offense. All right. So, yeah. You know, I, I mean, you're going to see him used more somewhere in the offense because he is a weapon. I tell you what. A 79-yard right. touchdown run called back. Called back. Block in the back. Yep. Um, you know, I, my goodness gracious. Huge hole. Backside guard comes around, steps up in the hole, puts a nice block on the linebacker. I don't know if that was the call on the, uh, the block in the back or not. But uh, quarterback ISO pops him. Before you know it, he's in the secondary, run away from people, and then uh, somebody almost tripped him up, and he stepped out of his shoe to get into the end zone. I said 79. That's after the penalty yardage. A 74-yard touchdown run called back. And, hey, Toscani can't run this one. He's got to catch his breath, so he'll hand back off to Adair, and Adair hits the wall, pushed back, and we're under four and a half minutes to play in this one. Uh, Toscani's limping a little bit because um, it looks like maybe when he got – tripped up down there uh, about the 20-yard line going in. Oh, you can see kind of limping off right there. Uh, it might have uh, nipped his ankle maybe or his foot or something of that nature. And But you know what he's saying right now? I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> yes. I'm all right. Leave me alone. I'm all right. Because you know why? I'm getting to play. I want to play. And uh, a young man like that that's a uh, competitor, he doesn't want to come out of a football game because his ankle might be hurting a little bit. Tyler St. Germain angling one again to the right sideline doesn't go out of bounds picked up dropped and saved that was oh so close tell you what great coverage by the uh, punt team for the That's colonels right there Down the tucker the running back saved that one because when he dropped it it was a little scary for the panthers all right and the coverage was great all over it uh, were the Colonels' uh, coverage units, and I tell you what, they've uh, they've done a pretty good job tonight uh, on uh, their kickoffs as well as their punts. They've had a couple of kickoffs uh, 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 that were a, a little shaky, but for the most part have done a great job on all their coverage teams tonight. I know Tim Rebo will be happy with that, as also being a former special team coordinator, which he's been. Jalen Martin, the backup quarterback to LaBelle McCullers, stays in the game for his second big series here. And he will toss it complete to Hardy, who's come off the bench to play a pretty good football game. He's caught a number of, of balls. He's brought down by a backup corner, Christian Mims, 6'4", 180, out of Ellender High School, right down the road in Homa. Roll out and toss. Incomplete. Intended for Carter, who's also come off the bench, and they're trying to get him more involved in the offense for the Panthers. If you're Sam Houston and you've seen Toscani Figaro run the football, something you haven't been seeing from this nickel offense because it's been all chase for Kate, are you thinking a little differently? We have to prepare for something extra this week because Nichols might surprise us with him in a different role. I think what, you, what you've got to do is you've got to be aware of this uh, uh, talent that he has. And if you see number eight anywhere on the field, yeah. you better be screaming and pointing that he is there because he can throw the football and he can run the football. He's, he's, he's really a great talent. I'm talking even as a returner on the kickoff game, some sort of throwback uh, uh, trick uh, pass on a kickoff if it's a lateral something of that nature you've got to be aware of his abilities and where he is so i'm gonna tell you what's going to happen carter with the last catch by the way right sam houston state defensive coordinator will be all over that 
and they will have somebody this week over at Sam Houston State wearing a number eight. Flag down as Carter was mixing it up with Christian Mims in the Nichols defensive backfield, and a late flag was thrown at about the 33-yard line. So let's see if interference is called on Mims. What you might get is, a, uh, again, I'm, I'm, if I'm down there and I'm looking at this, I see an offensive interference call because he never came out of his route, never attempted to get the ball, and did not allow the defensive back to make a play. There it is. Nope, they picked it up. Or, or oh, they did I pick it up. I think that he wave it off or because he didn't make the interference penalty. Well, they picked it up and waved it off. I didn't <laughs> It's kind of vague with his, um, his well, motions and his uh, signals, but uh, it looks like they waved it off. Fourth down. To move the chains, and the Panthers do. So McCray on the carry. They've used the same three running backs, Stephon McCray. DeWanya Tucker and Caleb Broach. And they rotate those guys through to keep a lot of fresh legs in there. DeWanya Tucker back in the game at running back for Pro Review. 2.15 to play in this one. Colonels have it tucked away. Pro Review would like to get a touchdown on the board. Ward's going to go for it all. Got a man down there. Good catch right at the five yard line. Thrown on the money and once again that's Carter. They've been trying to get him in the offense and they're finally getting him there. Good tell you what, catch by Carter. Good catch but I tell you what what a throw by Jalen Morton. Puts mm -hmm. it right on target on the post route. Hits him in stride. Uh, great grab. Uh, Jalen Morton's got a nice little uh, uh, gun on him. You know he can throw the football well. A lot of experience from last year. This time an overthrow in the end zone. Had nowhere to go with that, Ken. He just throws that away to get rid of it right there and stops the clock. Again, trying to play the situation here. Don't worry about the score. Let's play. Okay, we had a five-yard penalty right there. It looked like uh, possibly for uh, maybe some sort of uh, blo illegal block or something of that nature. I couldn't really tell from the signal again. But, uh, I didn't see the flag. They, I, they yeah, threw it, picked it right. up so quickly. Correct. But get, getting back to what uh, I was saying, let's play the situation. You know, you've got minute 39. Look where we are in the field. Don't worry about the score. Let's get some experience. Well, let's see what they do here. Big rush by the Colonels. Toss down Great low play. and good defense by Nichols. I believe that was Christian Mims, number 34, on the play. Intended for Joshua Simmons. And they, when I say they, the Panthers have never been able to get Simmons into their offense all night. Right. Well, that was the same post route right there that Mims had just gotten beat on uh, uh, the play, uh, play prior. And right there he comes and makes a nice play right there, squeezing the post route, getting the hand in and raking, uh, raking the ball out of the receiver's hands. A little over... A minute 30 to go in this one. Pass out. Little outlet pass, and that's caught by Simmons. Right there on the play. Great tackle by number 27, Javon Lewis from Santa Mon High School. You know, Simmons looks healthy. I, I'm still bewildered that. Curry View just has not been able to get him more to the offense tonight at any part of this game with the speed and the hands that he has. There's a toss into the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. So finally, Prairie View is able to get in with Jalen Martin guiding them for the score, and just a nice pass to Zarian Holcomb. So Martin to Holcomb for eight yards and the touchdown. Nine plays, 67 yards, two minutes and 36 seconds. They played the situation. It's good to see their offense get on the board with the touchdown right there, and that's going to take them a long way experience-wise into next week at Alabama State. 
Yeah, that was the big thing for Willie Simmons and this Pro Review team. Just get some points. Score. They, they've been down there three times real close. First two times they could not get it in. This time, success. They get it in there. And I think I think that Pro Review has found a few sleepers sitting on the bench that might see some action against Alabama State. And I think Holcomb, who just caught that touchdown pass along with Drake Carter and uh, Marcus Hardy, those guys aren't listed on the two deep, but guess what? They, they might see some action in SWAC play for this Prairie View team. They've proven tonight that they can play. Well, they might move up the depth chart. You know, I, you know, you, you talk to coaches, and, and, and Coach Simmons is no different. One of the things he tells his kids, I'm sure, is that, hey, that depth chart isn't um, set in stone. You go out and perform, and you do the things you're supposed to do and do the things we ask you to do. You know, people are going to change on that depth chart, and that's what might take place. You can see Nichols, uh, if you're looking at it at home, is setting up in an onside kick type of scenario. It'll be interesting to see if Prairie View uses their onside kick um, with the deficit they're facing. You know what? You've got a minute left on the clock. Great opportunity, if you can get it, to use that last minute end of the game, two-minute offense, practice it here, work on it. For conference, but because look, no matter how you look at it, these first two games are like preseason. What counts for this team is when SWAC play starts next week at Alabama State. Well, what they did is they pooched it in the air over here and doing a nice job coming over and catching the ball. Stefano Garisco. Stefano Garisco catches the ball and just takes a knee right there, and uh, just the way he's taught uh, for the hands team or the all state team. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, the good hands team. Yeah, where, are those, uh, where are those big nets at the end there? So Toscani Figaro in place of Chase Fourcade, who has gotten to rest the entire fourth quarter along with Kyron Irvin. And uh, both of those guys are well-deserved rests. Nichols is just going to take a knee. Victory formation. No need to run. Another play. Per review has timeouts remaining, but they don't have to take them. Colonels cruising 44 to 13. But the big thing for the Panthers is to try to find a way to get Lavelle McCullers comfortable with this offense and to figure out whether Lavelle McCullers or Jalen Martin starts next week. That's going to do it. The final here is 44 to 13. Nichols over Prairie View as the coaches meet at the middle of the field. Nichols is now two and one with victories over Prairie View tonight and McNeese, a Southland Conference opponent in the season opener with the only loss they had coming last week at Texas A&M playing the big FBS school. Prairie View falls to 0 and two on the year with a loss last week at Sam Houston State, and then the loss tonight to the Colonels, playing two Southland Conference teams back-to-back. -back. The Colonels next week will uh, continue their Southland Conference play at Sam Houston. So they've beaten McNeese on August 31st, something they had not done for eight years, and they face the best team in the Southland Conference next week on the road, while Prairie View opens play in the Southwestern Athletics Conference on the road at Alabama State. So it won't be easy for either school, but I'll tell you what, both of these schools, even though the offense did not show it tonight for Prairie View, was very explosive last week. And if that offense from last week shows up against Alabama State, look out. And this Nichols team, well, they're proven they belong. And, and way, the way you prove you belong somewhere along the line is to win games like McNeese, which they did, and then go on the road and win one against the best team in the conference. Well, absolutely, and they both start uh, move back into conference play again next week, and they both have tall orders in front of them. But, uh, you know, when you talk about Nickel State at this point in time, this is a huge confidence builder when they're going to have to go on the road next week. Tim Rebo and his staff will know how exactly how to prepare his team and get them ready for, the, the, you know, the upcoming challenge of a Stam Houston State. But Alabama, Alabama, Alabama State will have to prepare – possibly now for two quarterbacks coming from Prairie View. Uh, the big challenge for Prairie View this week in practice for Coach Simmons is to be able to get uh, 
both of his quarterbacks, and, and namely Mr. McCullers, to calm down and be able to uh, get back into some sort of rhythm and to learn how, again, take what is given you and stop pressing. He's, he, he's, he's a great football coach. He's got a great staff. I'm sure he'll be able to get that going next week as they prepare for Alabama State. Before we sign off, let's give a few of the stats in this game. And, and as I give them here, just anything you want to com uh, comment on, Wade, um, give it to me. Rushing yards for the Colonels, 219 yards rushing to 133 for Prairie View. Passing yards, 274 for the Colonels. Uh, 214 for Prairie View. Most of that coming very late on right. uh, the last couple of drives after the game was well uh, put away. When you look at uh, fumbles lost, neither team fumbled. Uh, I'm sorry, Prairie View did fumble one Once. and lose it. And the Colonels had the one interception. You right. look at individual statistics, and I think everybody wants to know how Chase 4K did in this game. Chase 4K, 18 for 26. One interception, 18 for 26, 248 yards, two touchdowns. Well, you, you, he look, was sacked twice. Right. you look at 4K's numbers right there, it's, it's about management. Yes. Okay. He, he managed the game, uh, stayed inside what they do in their offense, uh, took what was given to him when he could. When he had to throw the ball deep, he completed uh, two nice passes for uh, on deep routes, hit the seam routes when he had to. Uh, that sort of thing, managed the game, kept his offense moving the sticks, and it resulted in the points that they uh, they put on the board. Uh, just kind of Figaro, who is, and we just talked about for about the past five or ten minutes towards the end of the game, what a talent he is. It's going to be really interesting to see how they move forward and take Figaro and figure him somewhere, somewhere on the field uh, to give them another weapon. Tell you what, if you put him in running back, with Chase as quarterback, and that opens up something new. Uh, McCullers, Lavelle McCullers, 11 of 27, 122 yards, no touchdowns. He was sacked four times. Jalen Martin comes off the bench, 7 of 13, 92 yards, the one touchdown very late. What was impressive is that Nichols used eight receivers, eight, eight different receivers with uh, Roberts, Booker, and Rodgers each catching four, and, and surprisingly very quiet tonight was Jean-Pierre with just one reception, and Booker, well, Booker had four, so, but Jean-Pierre only had, only had one reception tonight. LaBeouf, the big tight end, one reception. Let's take a look at rushing real quick. Um, and on the other side, on Prairie View, on the receiving side, uh, Simmons, Simmons led all receivers with six for 56 yards. Nichols rushing, Kyron Urban, 19 carries, 116, 113 yards. 